Yes, yes, it's a beautiful thing. Very much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's very much. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful thing.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're starting right today. And we'll start by uh, praying and worship and discussing. So can we just begin to appreciate God? Can we begin to give him all the glory? Can we begin to give him all the honor? Worship him because he's God. We can use this as God. Let's pray, worship God, give God all the glory, give him all the honor, give him all the adoration. He's the King of Kings, he's the Lord of Lords, he's the Alpha and Omega, he's the Ancient of Days, he's the Lady of the Valley. We worship you, Jesus, we bless you, we give you praise. Jehovah, your God is man like you. Mando, Shabran, Zaled, Rosh, Shoket, Rendozi Kratoli Brada do she brandada. Manoza Kali Branda do shekete le frado di brandada. Reketo she brahanda da li brado zata. Rende de do zatala brado shile de de. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. Free God, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. Jehovah, we lift your name higher. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. You are God from beginning to the end. You are God that is none like you. you are God is not like you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We give the praise. 
We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Manto shipra and daralira roche kete. Mazukra and dali branda rose la nano shata. Rekete zubra dali brando zukroto li brada dali dada roshata. Rekete zebra and dali frado shibra dada. Mashata li frado zilede. Rekete zubra dali frando shata la brado zilede. Ratu shata li frando zulede do shata. Men zubra handa dani mano shanta li branda do shekete. Brado zilede do shikra and Ratali branda do shi manana rene do zekete li frando shi branda da men shi krete li branda do shete le de do shata mamzu branda da blessed be the name of the Lord we worship you we worship you we worship you we give the praise allo het be thy name allo het be thy name delia saili Often as I go, hello, hat be thy name. Hello, hat be thy name. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Masha Katali Brado Zekete. Reketo Zibrahan Dada Nimano Shata. Masha Katali Brado Shekete. Manzutala Prando Shibranada. Masha Katali Prando Zukroto Libranda do Zilede. Ledo Shakato Zekete. Libranda do Zilede. Manzubrahan Dada Nemano Zata. Rekete Zubrado Shibrahan Dada. Reketo Zata. Libranda do Shekre. Reketo zubra handa da libra da no shakata mendo zata libra do shakata. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Glorious God, beautiful, excellent God. We bow before your throne, glorious God, beautiful King, God, we bow before your throne, bow before your throne, worship at your feet. Bow before your throne. You are the glorious, glorious God, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. Beautiful King. Bow before your throne. Bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are the glorious, your name is Alpha, Omega, changeless, mighty Jehovah. Can we begin to worship him? Worship him again. Call him names. Call him Jehovah. Call him the lover of your soul. Hey, he's the king of kings. He's your lover. Hey, my lover, oh, my lover. Oh. He's your lover. He's the one that made you. He kept you throughout 2020. Despite all the pandemic, despite everything that happened this year, the Lord was so faithful. His name was, his name is Yahweh. The Lord has been faithful to us. He has been kind. 
kind, the provision, the protection, mention it. He has been so glorious to us. Lord, we worship you. Many started this year together with us, but we had day to day. The Lord has kept us thus far. We're not taking this for granted. We are not taking this for granted. We lift your name higher. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We allow your name. You are good. There is none like you. You are God from the beginning to the end. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Lord, we worship you. Your Ruba, we say that Lord, you know, we give you praise. You are God. There is none like you. We lift your name higher. Allow be the name of the Lord. Allow be the name of the Lord. Can you just lift up your voice? You are peace. You are not just ordinary. Hey, Madu Zakata. Manal she brother, wherever you are now, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are thanking Jesus. Make sure you are saying something sweet to him. Make sure you are saying something sweet to Jesus. Mazu Tali Brado Shake at Ali Brado they are bring like worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Say something sweet to him. Tell him you are beautiful, God. You are the, you are faithful. You are almighty. There is none like you. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We hallow your name. You are God from beginning to the end. There is none like you. There's none to be compared to your majesty. We worship you, Jesus. We lift your name higher. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Jehovah, we lift your name higher. Jehovah, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. My brother, she brotherly brother, oh, shake it. If you're on Facebook, you are watching us, praise him. Give him all the glory. If you're on Zoom, you are watching us, praise him. Give him all the glory. Thank you because he is God. It is God. He is God. He has made today visible and he has made today come to pass. Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Praise God. So now we'll be, we'll be committing our souls into God's hand. <laughs> we will ask God when we're praying, we are preparing for this program. The Lord has showed us a lot of things. The Lord has told us so many things introduced via this program. So we'll be talking to God. I cannot come to this program. You know, I a message this morning. If you are here, one thing we have done is you've implicated yourself. <laughs> because coming here today, being part of this program has implicated you to succeed, has implicated you to be great in life, has implicated you not to give less as a woman. <laughs> I will not be surprised after this program if you are writing books, if you are, if God is giving you to do great and mighty things in your local church, in Canada, anywhere, if you are doing great things in righteousness. If your husband sees you and says, ah, ah, you are something else, something has happened to you, I will not be surprised. <laughs> Us. It's meant to support us. It's meant to, to, to bring out the glory in us. It's meant to bring out that thing in us that is still active. It's meant to remove the dross in us and make our bones to shine. So you will talk to God. You will tell it to God, today my life will not remain the same. After this program, I refuse to go back the same. I refuse to go back the same after this program. Lord, do a walk through me. Lord, do a walk through me that after this program, people will see me and know that something has happened to me. Can you begin to talk to God? That the Lord will work wonders through you. That the word of the Lord will come to you today. That the word of the Lord will pierce through your heart. That the word of the Lord will come to you. That your own word will come. Mazutali, brado, shatale, brado, zelelele. let your word come, Jesus. Let your word come, Jesus. Let your word come to us. Let your word come. Mazutali, brado, shata. Mazu, brother, can you begin to pray for the ministers? That the Lord will speak to them. Mazu, Tali brother, that and through them the Lord will bless you and bless me. Manzu Tali brado shake it, tell the brado zala da da. Reketo zapra and zapra and zapra. Reketo zapra and zapra. Tali brado shata. Can we begin to bring our prayer to close? Can we begin to worship God? Can we begin to give Him all the glory? Can we begin to give Him all the honor? Can we begin to give Him all the adoration? Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship you. We lift your name higher. You are God. You are God. You are God. Just begin to worship him by singing songs to him. Begin to give him all the glory. Begin to give him all the honor. Begin to give him all the adoration. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, we are glad to have us here. And like we have heard, we, we are so thankful that God will do something in our midst today. And um, we will not take this for granted. So the next thing on our program is welcome chat. Please, if you know that um, you'll be distracted, you can mute your, so avoid distraction, you can mute your audio. So we, not, we don't need any response now. Yes, let's mute our audio since there is no need for response now. All right, and the next thing on our agenda is welcome chat, and it's uh, our mommy, a <laughs> great pillar indeed. That will be taking it for us, Pilar Abidemi Adebayo. Please, let's welcome her as she takes the welcome charge. Praise God. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. So, I'm just taking um, briefly the welcome charge. I know we are already charged, <laughs> and we 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 won't we we have high expectation as regarding this program, and we trust the Lord to, to meet our expectation, even beyond our expectation. The Lord will meet in Jesus' name. Can we just bow down and close our eyes as we just pray? Dear Father, we worship you. We give you praise. Jehovah, we hallow your name because we are God. There's none like you. Thank you for gathering us together, even in this conference, <laughs> because we know. This conference has been predetermined. And this conference is not just for one person, for e but for every participant. We know that after this program, you begin to unveil ourselves to us. You begin to reveal ourselves to us. You begin to show us that thing you've put in us and we begin to impact our generation. You will reveal to us why you have created us a woman because we are never a mistake and we are not an afterthought. We have this belief that through us, you will do great and mighty things in our generation. And that's why we've gathered together even to listen to you and to receive grace for, for, for the future race. Lord, we ask that this grace will not help with us in Jesus' name. You bless every woman on this platform and you use every woman, oh Lord, mightily that will be standing tall and complete in hall. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise God. So I will just be sharing briefly the vision of the um, Pillars female platform. And uh, I will also share briefly what the Lord has said today and I missed today. And just say briefly about the ministers of God that the Lord has released for us this afternoon. So as I was in earlier introduced, my name is Bidemi, <laughs> saved by grace. Yeah. So I was saved by grace. So I realized that God saving me is not just for, for not a reason, but for a particular reason. And he has saved me and he has saved you too for a purpose, not just to be a woman, not just to be living, but to live, live for others. Believe God to impact lives and generations. If you have your Bible there, can you please open to Psalm 144, verse 4, verse uh, 12, I mean, that our sons, I'm reading in King, King James Version, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstone. I want you to mark the word that our daughters may be as cornerstones. And after saying this, the Bible continued with polish after the similitude of the palace. When you look at the word cornerstones, cornerstones in another version says pillars. In another version says white flowers. So the Lord is so particular about daughters. The Lord is so particular about women. And not only the Lord, you know, I was discussing with few ladies and we realized that even the world himself, the world in its own, is also particular about women. I was privileged to join a book launch before this program. And you know, some ministers of God were, were reiterating the fact that women are spectacular in what God wants to do in this generation and coming revival. When you look at the, 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 the social media, when you look at the advert world, you realize that when they want to advertise a particular product, they, 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 they employ women to do the adverts. And what you see them do is to, to advertise in a nude way. 
Why? Because such woman did not really know who God has called her to be. And if really you know yourself as a cornerstone, when we talk about cornerstone, we talk about a special stone that holds other stones, that holds a building. A pillar is something that without a building will not stand firm. So a pillar is something that holds, something that makes other things to exist, something that makes other things to stand. So when, a, when the Bible calls you cornerstone, when the Bible calls me pillar, the Bible is not just uh, saying it for, for, for a joke because the word of the Lord is firm, the word of the Lord is truth. And that is why you should, as a woman, you, you, should, you, should, you should value yourself. <laughs> as a woman, you should be happy being a woman because you are so special. The Bible says he has made us, forged us a cornerstone polished after the similitude of the palace, meaning that we are not just meant for, 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 for a, a place that is not the palace. We are not meant for the streets. We are meant for the palace. And when you look at the people of the palace, you know, the, in the palace, they have their language. In the palace, they have the, their mode of dressing. In the palace, they have the way they eat. They have the way they conduct themselves, meaning that we are so special that we can't just devalue ourselves. We can't just ridicule ourselves. We can't just fit into what the world system think we have. But as a pillar, we should stand in every space of life. We should stand in, in the academic world. As a pillar, if you're a lecturer, you should be able to, 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 to stand. People should know that, no, somebody is there. In your career, you should stand. As a woman, your husband should be proud to have you. Your husband should be proud to call you his wife. As a daughter, your parents should be proud to call you their daughter. You know, I will still refer back to the book launch. The mother was so proud of her. Why? Because she has turned. So I, I, I heard us today, I know the Lord has uh, prepared verses for us. And the Lord has prepared to use us, uh, to use those verses to bless us. But I will, I will urge us to, to prepare a book, a notebook. If you are not here with your notebook, get your notebook and be, be particular about what God wants to do with your life today. Don't just join because you just want to join. But note every word that will be coming to you. I must tell you the ministers that the Lord will be using for us today are graced. I've been following them for a while because you, you, when you want to... When you want to do a particular thing, you look for people around you that are already doing that particular thing and you, 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 you enjoy it from their grace. And I must tell you, these ministers of God that we invited today, I've been following them for a while and I can see the grace of God upon their life. I can see that they are standing in all spheres. They are standing in all realms. They are standing in, in, in the academic world. They are standing in, 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 as, as a wife. They are standing in all spheres. So if you also want to tap into this grace, you need to listen to them and you need to listen prayerfully. So I want us to prepare our notes. I want us to prepare our hearts, most importantly, and hear what God will have us to. We hear what God will be saying. Hear what God will have us to note today. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So as we, 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 we try to invite our guest minister, I just want you to once again bow down your heart. I want you to bow down your heart and talk to God again. And just talk to God, tell you to God, Lord, even as I'll be waiting on you to receive from your word, please speak to me. Speak to me today. Speak to me today. I just want one word from you, just one word. Just one word from you today that will change my life. Just talk to God. Just one word that will change my life. Please speak to me, Lord. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to my heart. I don't want to live here the same. I don't want to go back and still remain uh, an inconsistent uh, uh, woman. I don't want to go back and still struggle with being a balanced woman. I don't want to go back and still remain inferior to my peers. I don't want to go back and still remain intimidated by what other women are doing in, in, in our generation. I don't want to go back and still remain who I am, but I want to be who you have called me to be. Can we begin to talk to God? Can we begin to talk to God? Do not let me go. 
the same way I came. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Do not let me go. The same way I came. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Do not let me go the same way I came. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Do not let me go the same way I came. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Can we talk to God? Lord, please touch me with your hands. Touch me with your hands. Touch me with your hands. Speak to me, Lord. <laughs> Speak to me, Lord. I don't just want to be an ordinary woman. I don't just want to be inferior as a woman. Please touch me. Speak to me today. Perhaps you are here and you're struggling with many things. You're struggling with many things as a woman. You've lost your identity as a woman. Can you talk to God, Lord, that I may locate myself again? that I will locate myself again. <laughs> because there is a lot of things that the Lord has put inside you. The devil has cheated you so much to think you are nothing, but you are something. <laughs> he has put so much inside of you. And you are here and you realize that you have not actualized all the Lord has put in you. Can you talk to God and shout, cry to him, cry to him like the blind man of Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus. And he said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Can you speak to God today? Even as we'll be looking at the topic pillars, we'll be looking at the topic graceful woman, we'll be looking at the topic cornerstone yet a woman. Perhaps you are here, you are married, but a lot of things is going on in your marriage. You know you are not standing as a woman in your marriage. You are here, you are trusting God for a life partner, but you know even your attitude is not welcoming to get a brother or a brother after God's own heart. Because even you, you are not yet standing as a, as a woman after God's own heart. Can you talk to God and say, Lord, please locate me today. I am here. Speak. Tell me to God. Be the means here. Lord, please locate me. Be the means here. I don't want to be a spectator. I don't want to be a spectator today. Please locate me. Please locate me. I don't want to be a spectator. Please locate me today. Locate me per adventure. You have this big vision before you got married. You are so vibrant. You are doing great and mighty things. But marriage has put you inside cooler. Can you talk to God? Lord, locate me again. Perhaps you are even single. But you realize that you are, you are single, but you are look warm. Can you talk to God? Lord, locate me today. Locate me today. Locate me today. You are single. You are still in your prime age. But yet you are not doing anything for Jesus. Yet you are not doing anything to impact life. Can you talk to God today and ask him to locate you? There is grace available in the house today. There is grace to do exploits. There is grace to live holy life. There is grace to live a righteous life. There is grace to, 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 to fly. There is grace to mount on wings like eagle. There is grace to, to, to live a, the, the, the life of the, the, such a life that Deborah lived on her. She was a counselor. She was, she was married. She, 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 she's so complete. She, she's so complete a woman. She's so complete a woman. Can you ask God? The grace is available in the house today. Can you ask God for such a grace? Can you ask God that as from today you should begin to manifest those things that the Lord has embedded in you? Can you ask God for adventure? You are here. You are in a relationship, a dirty relationship. And you know this is not what God wants for you. you. There's a grace to live holy life. There's a grace to live holy life. There's a grace to have this relationship that God actually wants for you, that will take you to fulfill God's purpose. You can't be living purposely, purposeless. <laughs> you can't be living your life the way you want to live it. You need to live your life according to pattern. You need to live your life according to pattern. In the kingdom of God in which we belong to, there is pattern. There is order. You can't just live anyhow. <laughs> if you are living anyhow, there's no way you can be polished and you can be taken to, 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 the, to the palace. Look at the life of Esther. If Esther has not listened to, 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 to Mordecai, which, which happens to, 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 to stand in a figure of her disciple, she might not be able to stand in the palace. She might not be able to stand firm and complete. Can you talk to God? Lord, please polish me. But I bet you, you don't even have a guard over yourself. You don't have a mentor. You don't have somebody that, can, that, that God can use to forge you. Can you talk to God? Lord, please send help to me today. Can we begin to bring our prayer to a close. 
Dear Father, we appreciate you for today. We give you all the glory. Father, even as we listen to your daughters in whom you have prepared to bless us this afternoon, Father, we have that you will give us glory in Jesus. Father, that you speak to our hearts. Father, we ask for just one thing. Let your word come to us. <laughs> the Bible says the word of God is sharper than two edges word. It pierces, it sharpens. Perhaps we have dull sight in the house. We are dull in hearing. We are dull at heart. And this has hindered us from fulfilling your purpose. Lord, you said your word is sharper than two edges word. You said it's pierced. <laughs> it pierced. Lord, we ask that your word will come today and it will sharpen our eyes. It will sharpen our hearing. It will sharpen, it will sharpen our hearts that as from today we will begin to see the way we see. We will begin to live a life of a pillar. We will begin to live a purposeful life. We will begin to stand. We will begin to, 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 to occupy space, occupy palaces, and we will begin to live an impactful life for you. Thank you, Lord, because we believe you answered our prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Ma. As we invite Mommy Omolara Ayola, I will call on just the biography of Mommy. I know that Mommy is actually loaded, but we can only just summarize her. So as we are Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yes, it's such a great privilege to be part of this meeting. And it's such a great privilege also to have a Mr. Um, our guest minister, Mrs. Omola, Omolara Ayola, PMH. I will be taking a biography briefly. Um, I want us to welcome her, probably you put a wave on the chat as you welcome her, even as I read her biography. Mrs. Omolara Ayola is a lover of God and a devoted Christian. She's a graduate of mass communication from Ambrose Ali University, Ekoma. She's equally an author, a visionary of the World Foundation Christian Drama Ministry. She's um, of, she's the visionary of the World Foundation. She's also a Christian drama minister. She's a film producer. She's an actress and director and a voiceover artist. She's also a TV and radio presenter. She's the host of World Foundation show. She's married to Olubenga Ayola, a dogged child of God and a Christian drama minister equally. Wow. Also, she's um, the CEO of SMH Photography. Please join me as we welcome this great woman of God, whom God has worked upon so much, Mrs. Omolara Ayo. It's a privilege to have you in the house, ma'am. Thank you very welcome. much. Good afternoon, great healers. Good afternoon, beautiful women. Um, it's a privilege being here. I'm so happy. It's an opportunity for me. Uh, to be in the midst of wonderful women of God, um, to actually have this discussion. I won't say it's a, it's a preaching, but of course, it's going to be just reminding ourselves of the things that we, we have known. So thank you very much, um, my wonderful sister, for the privilege given to me to be here. God bless you. All protocols observed. I want to um, greet our second guest. Thank you very much for being part of this program and to everyone who um, is here. God bless you. And the Lord will speak to us this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, and our Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you, Lord. For all that you have started since the beginning of this program, you have been our God, you have been our anchor, you have helped us, you have, you have heard our prayers, you have kept us to be here today. Father, we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a program like this where we come together to speak, come together to discuss, come together to discover ourselves, 
and to hear from you. Father, we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, Lord, we ask, oh Lord, this evening that you would speak your word to our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask, oh God, that everything we'll be hearing today, Father, will be to us and not here alone in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree there's anyone in this house who is confused as regards their identity, as who they are in Christ, Lord Jesus, we pray that you will open their eyes, oh God, to see and to know who they are in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never again will anyone here be confused about their identity in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree that your presence will be in our midst. You speak through this mouth of clay. We pray that you will take the front row and we will be at the back in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone shall be glorified, no flesh shall glory in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Okay, so this afternoon, we're going to be talking about a cornerstone, yet a woman. So when I saw that, that um, particular theme, I was so excited because... I know basically he's talking to us as women. When I discovered that out of the scripture, that Psalm 144, it was, I was so excited when I started finding out, you know, what God meant by being a pillar and a cornerstone. I was so excited because it's something that is of value. You know, you can imagine a part of the whole building that without it, the whole building is useless. Without it, the building cannot stand. Okay, please, I want to, I want to, um, I don't know, I think one of us has a mic on, but there's a background noise there. I don't know if it's possible for the person to mute so that we can enjoy the message. Okay, I was saying that being a pillar is something of value. Imagine no matter how build a, a, a big a building is, no matter how large a particular building is, without a pillar, no building can stand. Without a cornerstone, there is no beauty in you know, a house. It cannot be properly you know, joined together. So I was so excited when I saw it, Psalm 144 verse 12, and it says that our sons may be as plants. That our son may be as plants grows up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstone polished after the similitude of a palace. And so I tried to look for the name of a cornerstone. And then, it, um, and, and Chino, so can you ahead? I don't know why she's unmuting herself. Please, let's, uh, we are women of value. We are women of respect. Please, let's obey the rules. If you are muted, please stay muted so that we can enjoy the program. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, so. Um, I looked at the meaning of a cornerstone. A cornerstone is a ceremonial stone set at the corner of a building, joining two exterior walls and often inscribed with a starting and completion date of construction. And it also carries the name of the architect and the owner and other details. Honestly, I am so much in love with this, with this, um, this definition. It says that it's a ceremonial stone. So it's not like it's any ordinary stone that is in a the house. There are several stones in a house, but you know the way a cornerstone is being described here, it means that nothing can cover a cornerstone because for a cornerstone, some things are inscribed on it. And the only reason for those things to be inscribed on it is for people to know 
the date the whole thing started and the date the construction ended and also the name of the architect and the name of the owner maybe not everybody does that but i know before they come up with this um description with this definition i'm sure it must have been something that was very consistent and that they were doing regularly you know in those days so that's why they could say this so a cornerstone like um, the bible has described us we are very important pillars are important to a house pillars are important to any kind of building at all pillar is what holds a building that is what the building depends on the moment a pillar is removed it means that that building is going to collapse and so when i was as i was reading that part of the scripture I've, i now i've come to realize that the bible described the woman in a very in a different way he used us you know th th there are different ways that the, the bible described the woman he he portrayed us as something or someone that cannot be done without you know without us the world may not you know may not be in order without us i'm sure some married women in the house will say ah without me in that house my house would be a chaos not in character but probably in in some actions like when the man comes to the house he just throws his shirt everywhere he leaves his shoe anywhere everywhere is just you know sometimes when we travel and we have our husbands at home by the time we come back the whole house is in disarray and then you come back to meet a job come back to meet work and all that so i i i know that for some of us we are like ah if i am not in the house I cannot expect to meet the house in order. The men that are doing it, it's not that they are wicked. It's just that they cannot help themselves. They are not wired to just do some things. They are wired to just live a life of ease. They cannot stress themselves and just, you know, be doing what they are not wired for. But of course, there are a few men who have learned over the time to also help and to also make sure that things are in order. So a pillar, a cornerstone, because some part of the scripture, some translation call it a pillar, some translation call it a cornerstone. So I'll be using the, the two words interchangeably and um, we're going to move on from there. So I looked at it and said a, a pillar is very dependable. That is what the building depends on, you know. And as, it was say, as, as the description goes, it says that it carries the date of construction the date ended and the day started. It has the name of the architect on it and the name of the owner. And so I come, I now come to a conclusion that you as a pillar, as a woman, you must carry the signature of God on you. The world must know who you are. The world must know where you belong. You must take a stand because there is no confusion as to a cornerstone that has the name of the architect and the name of the owner on it. There is no confusion. When anybody gets close to that cornerstone, they see it and they say, oh, this is the, this is the person who did this. This is the owner of this particular stuff. This is the architect that designed this thing. And this is the owner of this stuff. So you as a cornerstone, you as a woman, you must have God's signature on you. God's signature is on you from the moment you gave your life to Christ. But what you do consistently after, after that would keep it there. People, people may not see it, you know. Sin can make us to, to look, you know, like something else to people. But when you're consistently living in the ways of God, in the ways of God, in his precepts, you are following his instruction, you're following his words, you're following... The, the scripture, the signature of God will be on you and people will see it. The Bible says, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. The beauty of God is upon you 24-7. But the things that you do are the things that can make people not to see it. The things that you do on a daily basis may make, may, may make it just uh, blow off from people's eyes. People may not see it. But it is there. But the moment you come back to your creator, it shows forth again. So we're talking about a cornerstone, yet a woman. And I look at it. A woman has a lot of, a lot of 
things to offer the world. I look at the scripture and I was just thinking of different ways that women were um, a part of amazing things that happened in the Bible. And so I, 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 I've come to realize that as a woman, we are the ones that our world is depending on because we are the pillar. We are the cornerstone that is connecting our world together. We are the cornerstone that is bringing everything into fulfillment. Mary, as an example, without a woman, God wouldn't have been able to bring Jesus to this world the way he did. Imagine when God created Adam and Eve, all he wanted to do is that he wanted to create something of value so that from there, the world can continue to go on. The world can continue to, you know, evolve and begin to grow. He said we should, we should, we should replenish the earth. We should subdue it. We should multiply. That is what God wants from us. But at a point when Adam and Eve sinned, you will realize that when, this, when, when the serpent wanted to carry out his, his evil act, he went after the woman because he knew that when the woman wants to achieve anything, she will achieve it. She has the power to achieve whatever she wants to achieve. If, if she's convinced about a particular thing, you can be sure that the woman will go to any length to do it. If you can, if you can convince a woman about a particular project, you can be sure that when that woman signs that contract with you, she will see it to the end. If a woman is convinced about a particular man, there is nothing anybody can say for her not to marry that man. You know? There is absolutely nothing anybody can say. So what happens is that when the devil wants to carry out his, his evil act, he went after the woman. He knew that the woman has the power to talk to her husband and her husband will fall for the trick. He just knew. He was smart enough to know the right person to go, to go for. Maybe if he had gone for Adam, he wouldn't have been able to achieve his aim. But you know what? He went for Eve. Can we, can we hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I heard yes. some people complain. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So after the woman, so he realized that, see, the woman is the best to go and make. And so he went, with the, he went to the woman and then convinced her about the reason why she should take the fruit. And then the woman went ahead, carried that conv conviction to her husband. And the husband could not really say much. He just agreed. And then we found ourselves where we are today. When God created Adam, when, 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 when God created Adam, he wanted everything to just go on smoothly. But look at what we are here today. I'm still going to come back to the story of, to, to, the, to the Eve story. I'm taking it straight to Mary. So when God saw that there was an issue, when God saw that there's a challenge and they needed to make a change, God was looking for someone he could partner with to do this amazing work of salvation. He thought of it. He could have decided to just bring Jesus to the, to the world. You know, he could have decided to bring Jesus to the world himself without him coming through the womb of a woman. But you know what? When he needed to do the work of redemption, he needed the woman to do it. He needed to partner with the woman. He didn't need a man at that point. It was at the point where the work had been done and there was need for parental care. That was when the man, you know, was now, was now involved. But the woman was involved right from the beginning. God needed her to do this great assignment. So that is to tell you that the woman is so special in the agenda of God. The woman is very paramount in the agenda of God. And that is why you see the devil go after the woman every time. Always attacking the female gender. Always frustrating the female gender. Always trying to confuse us because he knows that if he gets us, he gets the world. The devil knows that if he can get the woman, he will get the word. In Revelations 12, 
if you read the whole of that chapter, you will see how the, the serpent or the dragon, you know, came after the woman. The Bible was talking about the woman who was pregnant and the dragon came and was after the baby. It was after the child, you know, and the woman was in labor. She wanted to give birth and the dragon was ready to swallow up the child and to swallow up the woman and kill mankind. And so in the scripture, in the Revelations 12, it was talking about the dragon. The dragon was, was filmy, was so angry with the woman and with the seed. Because the Bible says that it is the seed of the woman that will bruise the heel of the serpent. You get. So he was not like, okay, what shall I do? So he came with that, with that rage. He came with the rage to go after the woman and her seed. But what did the Bible The Bible says that, and God took the child and caught him up into heaven. Immediately the woman gave birth to the baby. God caught up the child and took him up to heaven. He said, he now sent the woman. The woman ran to the wilderness. He ran to a place where it has been prepared for her for over, I think, 1,260 days or something. He said the place was prepared for her. He said the, the dragon did all sorts. He put, he threw water. He opened, he did everything. He threw fire. Just to destroy a woman. And they call us a weaker vessel. Ah. If the dragon, dragon could be after the female gender like that, that means we carry something. It means there is something inside of the female gender that the enemy is after so that we would not be able to carry it out. So that we would not be able to fulfill it. So that we would not be able to do God's will. He is after us. He said, but in everything that the dragon did, he said the mouth on its mouth, is swallowed the water. The dragon was frustrated. There is nothing that the dragon did that worked against the, the seed of the woman and the woman herself. But in the later part of that chapter, it says that the dragon with that range and that anger, it said he decided to go after the remaining seed of the woman. All those ones who have confessed, who have confessed Christ as their Lord and Savior, he said he's going to go after them. And that is you and I. That is why the devil is, 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 is so angry with us. He just knew that when God wants to do anything extraordinary in this world, he will get us involved. If he wants to, if he wants to, you know, there is no time. You will realize that there is no time a destiny is going to be born that a woman is not involved. The only time that a destiny was born or a special child was, was created was in the, without a woman was when he created Adam. From that point, from the, from the lineage of Jesus down to all of us that we are in existence, a woman was involved in that creation. And so that is to tell you that there is something about us that the devil is so angry about. And so for us to be able to walk in God's ways, for us to be able to feel purpose, we must be a total woman. We must be a complete woman. We cannot live our lives all by ourselves. We cannot. And a complete woman, we're talking about a complete woman, a woman who is complete in God, complete in God, complete in God. There is nothing that would bother us with such a person. You don't have a shoe, it doesn't bother you. You don't have much clothes, it doesn't bother you. You are not married, it doesn't bother you. You don't have children, it doesn't bother you. You don't even have a good job, it does not bother you because your completeness is in God is in your creator. So he says a complete woman is one that has her entirety and her completeness in God. A complete woman is the woman whose completed is, completeness is not in her relationship. Her completeness is not in her marriage. Her completeness is not in her children. Her completeness is not in her job or location. It doesn't matter if you are in Nigeria or you are in America or you are in Canada. You don't care because you are a complete woman. Some people are not happy with where they are. Some people are so angry with God because God created them in Nigeria. Your location has nothing to do with the fulfillment of your purpose. Many of us, we have not even left the shores of this country. But to the glory of God, so many things that we have done to affect lives and to touch destinies, even outside the country. And in no time, the doors of those nations will be opened. 
if you are fulfilling purpose, if you are touching lives and influencing people, there is no way the doors of nation will not open unto you. So why not try and do something where you are? Why not try and enjoy where you are on the way to where you are going? So a complete woman is the one whose completeness as a woman is in God. Our entirety is in God. She is the one rooted in the understanding of her identity in Christ. She no longer takes reference from her past, but from Christ. Some people, they are just, they just desire to sit in their past. It is my past. Let me cook it. Let me boil it. Let me serve it fresh and let me eat it. You can decide to let go of your past and move on to the future. And you can also decide to put your, your past in front of you after cooking it and you eat it and take it over and over again. It depends on you. It depends on you. If you see yourself as a pillar, as a cornerstone, as somebody that God cannot do without, then you have to tell yourself, whatever situation I'm going through right now, whatever location I'm, I'm, I am in right now, I am going to do the will of God. And it does not matter where I am. God is my completeness. You have to tell yourself, being complete is a whole lot of work. And it encapsulates the totality of a person. Your character, your, out, your outward look, your inward look, the way you relate with people, the way you do things, you know, even the movement of your purpose. It's encapsulated to each other person. It may be hard, it may be rough, you know, along the line, but you know that if you put your totality in God and say, though he slay me, yes, I will trust him and I will maintain my ways before him. And you continue to serve God with the totality of your heart. One day the light will come. The world will not, the world does not give up on people who give up. I mean, the, I mean, the world, the world only gives up on people who give up. The world only celebrates people who do not give up on life. If you want to be celebrated, then you cannot give up at this moment. You want to be celebrated, you want your world to celebrate you, you want your world to, to you want to be relevant in your society, you want to be relevant in your world. You cannot afford to give up because the world only celebrates those who do not give up on life. When you hear about different women out there, you hear their story. If you see women who are complete and whole in themselves and they are doing things, they have paid their dues. They have paid their dues, they've paid their own rough and rough and tough times. I paid their dues. You will hear the story of a lot of women and you ask yourself a question. How did this person, how did this person, how did this person go through? How did she escape? I heard the story of a woman who was being abused several times. She was molested by her uncle and her uncle was living right in the house, in their house. And the mother did not know, the father did not know, the siblings did not know. And then the uncle was there molesting her. And at a point, the uncle wanted to move out of the house. And she went to meet her mom and said, I need also a person to follow me to my new house that I have just rented. And I need her to come and help me to clean up the house. And the girl said she wasn't going. The mother beat her and sent her into the car of the uncle to go with him. She said she had tried to speak to her mother several times. The mother did not listen. She was too busy. And then when they got to the house that the uncle asked her to come and clean, they did not clean the house. The uncle took her to that place and slept with her several times. She was like the black sheep of the family because the situation, the situation really, really changed her. She became so hard-hearted, so stubborn, so very disobedient. And she became the black sheep of the family. They did not know that something was wrong with her. Let me quickly ship this in. See, when you see a girl that is very, very stubborn, very disobedient, don't be quick to judge them. Please find out what is going on in the life of that child. Because a lot of girl child even, 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 even boy child are going through a lot. But of course, today we are focused on the woman. We are focused on the girl child. Don't be too quick to judge any child that is stubborn and disobedient and hard-hearted. Don't be too strong to judge them. If you ask them questions, something is going on in the life of that child. Something is going on that has made our heart to be hard. I just want to quickly, you know, clear that and, and just and just encourage because the woman when she was sharing her story, she said God that she became a shadow of herself. And look at her today; she's a great woman, a great woman in the society. Her name is Ayomi Gope. 
if you know about Ayomi Gokwe, no leftovers. She was the one that, you know, that served uh, Obama's wife, Moi Moi, in the White House. She speaks in high places. She rose with high, high, high level of people. She was not, she was not working with mean men. She was working in high places. And when she was young, nobody could have thought that she would reach that stage because of what she was going through. But at the point, she told herself she needed to let go of the past and hold on to the future, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So being all and complete in yourself is not something that happens all of a sudden. It's a journey. It's a journey. You must take it one step at a time. You must make up your mind that no matter what anybody has done to me, no matter what anybody has said to me, I am going to let go of it and I will focus on what God is saying about me. I will focus on what God is saying about me. You know? So in that definition, saying that, that a complete woman is the one whose completeness is in Christ. Whose you know, completeness is in Christ. Okay. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There is always something positive coming out of your life. You cannot just focus on the negative things that have happened. See, if you hold on to the past, you will pass with the past. If you continue to hold on with the past, you will pass with the past. It's better you just look at the future. I don't care what has happened in your life before now. I don't care what you have done, that you have aborted several times, where you have been sleeping around with people. I do not care. But what you do from this moment onward is what matters. You have to let go of the past. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, please do that. If you need to, to give your life afresh, please do it. If you need to go and confess, please do it. If there is anything you need to do to bring yourself back to your first love, please do it. And let go of that past. Don't let the devil judge you with your past. Because what the devil does is that he comes with the guilt of the past. And it tries to just confuse your mind about your identity in Christ. You are a co-creator with God. You need to know that. I've said that before. You are a co-creator with God. When God wanted to create mankind, he needed woman. After Adam. And he needed to create the second Adam. He needed the woman to do it. So you have to fight this battle with all of your heart, with all of your life. A complete woman is not the one who goes into a, a guy's house and is just slaving away. Many of our sisters, they slave away in the house of a guy. They just slave away. They go wash his clothes, they cook for him. Come and ask me. Come and ask me in those days. You know, when I would leave my, my father in the house and I would go to my boyfriend's house and I would go and wash clothes. I will go and cook. I will go and be behaving like a slave because I did not know who I was. I did not know my identity in Christ. I did not understand that I, that I wasn't supposed to do all that before anybody accepts me. You don't have to prove a point that you're a wife material to anybody. Let them see it in your character. You don't need to, you don't need to do something. You don't need to do something. You don't need to go some extra mile to prove that you're a wife material. Don't let anybody give you a, 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 this, this, this um, emotional blackmail that you are not, uh, those were the things they said to me then. The guy was saying I was not homely. I was not a wife material. I was not homely. And I needed to prove a point. I needed to prove a point to him that I was homely. I started washing his clothes. I would wash his, his friend's clothes. I would cook for him. All of his friends, most of the time, they were not less than four or five in the house. I will cook for them. I will wash plates. After all of them will finish eating, they will come and dump the plates in the kitchen. I will wash the plates. I will do all sorts. And then at the end of the day, the guy broke up with me. He ended the relationship. I tried to be homely. I tried to be homely. I tried to prove a point to him that I was a wife material, but it didn't matter to him. Do you know what he told me? He told me I was pretending that it was not in my nature. <laughs> he said it was not in my nature, that I was pretending. After trying to please him, you don't have to please anybody. You don't have to. That is not what makes one a complete woman. Being a complete woman does not... You, of course, you need to know how to do all those things. But please, if you are not married to that person, it is not your responsibility to do any of those things. It is not your responsibility to do it. It is not your responsibility. So 
you must know for sure that no matter what anybody says about you, you are created in the image of God. You are made just like him. A complete woman knows that and she enters her rest. A complete woman knows that she was created in the image of God and she enters her rest. It doesn't matter what people say about you. You are not homely. You are not this. You are not that. Some guys will say, oh, the reason why you have pimples all over your face is because you are not having sex. The reason why you are not beautiful is because you are not. The reason why you are having menstrual pain is because you are not having sex. All those things are just the plan of the enemy to frustrate us as women. You must know who you are in Christ and you must enter your rest from there. In Colossians 2, verses 8 to 10, it says, watch, watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. I'm reading the message translation. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings. Traditions of human beings will say the moment you start a relationship, ah, you must start behaving like a wife. You're already a wife. You must start behaving like a wife. Ah, you must at least once a while you should go to his house, help him take care of the house. You know, if you need a house help, you should get one. What matters matters at that point is your relationship with your maker. See, all these things we do in our courtship, in our relationship, all these things do not make a good marriage. You have to tell yourself, see, this is the time. The moment, even before you are engaged, is the time you need to be strong spiritually so that all your five spiritual senses can be open. Imagine if you can see in the spirit and see the future of the man you are about to marry. Imagine if you can hear in the spirit realm and God is speaking into your ears and telling you some things that you need to hear about your children in the future, even now that you are not married. Imagine if you can smell in the spirit realm. Imagine all those things. If you can feel, you know, if you can feel in the spirit realm, those are the things we should focus on right now. It says people who drag girls into endless arguments that never, never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty tradition of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. That's not the way of Christ. That's not the way of Christ. Everything of God is him so you can see and hear clearly he said everything about gets expressed in it so you can see and you can hear clearly when you focus on your maker you focus on your spiritual life you focus on how to grow spiritually you will hear in the spirit and you will see in the spirit as a woman because as a woman you are the pillar you should be dependable a lot of us women, our emotion is not stable. We are not stable emotionally. Today we are down. We want to give it to a guy who wants to sleep with us. The second time, you know, you want to be in the presence of God. You want to lead a uh, 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 praise of worship in church. It's Colossians 2. Colossians 2 verses 8 to 10. So, we cannot afford to be a, uh, um, um, not to be stable emotionally as a woman. We cannot afford to be because we are supposed to be dependable. We are supposed to be the pillar who holds, you know, everything around us. Yes, sometimes a time of weakness may come because we are human. But when you know who you are in Christ, and your a time of weakness comes, to come, you know, wants to come, you can you can you will feel it as human beings. But in a, in a short moment, you speak to yourself and say, I am born of God. I have overcome the world. I am dependable. There is power in your word. Many of the things that happen to us as, as human beings happen in our mind and in our heart. When they start, they start from the mind. Your mind will start playing games or you start telling you some things. See, listen to me. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You don't fight thoughts with thought. You fight thought with words. You must learn to open your mouth and speak when some strange thought wants to overshadow your mind. You must learn, you must learn how to open your mouth and declare what you want against the reality that you can see. You must learn to declare your future according to the word of God against the things that are happening around you right now. Somebody put a post online. She said that it is not the water around the canoe 
or the sheep that drowns it, but the one that gets inside of it. Don't be moved by the things that surround you, such that you would be so careless and allow them to come inside of you. You must learn to get off some thoughts with the word of God. You must learn to be sharp and be quick to declare something that you don't want. I tell people we must be, we must be so fast, we must be so fast, we must be so fast to declare, to speak out as a woman. We have to be strong physically, we have to be strong spiritually. Praise the Lord. And so to continue in verse 9, it says, okay, in verse 9 says, everything of God gets expressed in him. So you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope or a microscope or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ, the universe without him. It says, when you come to him, the fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. When you are complete in Christ, you will know that the power of God extends over everything. It extends over that joblessness. It extends over, over that, that life partner you are trusting the Lord for. It extends over the child you are trusting God for. It extends over the job you are trusting the God for. It extends over the admission you are trusting God for. It extends over that thing, whatever it is. Many of us, we worry too much. We bother about what people say. We bother about the things that we don't have. Why don't you take a time? And just focus on the thing that God has done for you. You know, you have to make up your mind that I will stand as a woman. I may be a woman, but I am strong. I may be a woman, but I am dependable. I may be a woman, but I am strong. I am so energetic. I am spiritually strong. I am physically strong in all things. I want every one of us to take time to read that Revelations 12, read the whole of that chapter. You will understand that the female gender is going through a lot of challenges and issues. And so God has conquered for us, but the things we do may hinder it. When people say some things and say, ah, but I heard God, that God said I should marry this person. See, the fact that you heard God, don't forget that Human being is still in. God. Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, yes, can you hear me? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, because I, I guess I, I went off briefly. Okay. Okay, so I was saying that you must be complete in God. You must be assured that you are created in the image of God. If you don't know who you are, you cannot, you cannot open the door for others. You cannot make others know who they are. You cannot give what you don't have. A woman is supposed to understand who she is. Before you can fulfill your purpose, before you can walk in the precepts of, of God and, and, and fulfill your destiny, you must know who you are in Christ. And once you know who you are in Christ, you will be able to open the eyes of other people to the same thing. And so you have to be strong and whole and complete in yourself. Maybe because of the kind of job I do, I counsel a lot of people. And people come, you see, and the female gender are the ones. Since I opened this office, I think I've only had maybe one male who had entered this, who had come to the office for counseling. 80% or 95% of those who have been here, they are female. And you will hear different issues. You will hear different things. You are not, you are not who people say that you are. You are who God says you are. And when you focus on that, let anybody call you names. Let anybody call you any kind of name. It will not matter to you. You will focus, you will find your identity in the word of God. And you will continue to stand by it. A complete woman is the one who treats people well. You treat people well, you, you, you make people feel good. You don't look down on people. You don't look down on, on other people because people, people are not, they are not, they are not of the same class with you. Then you just look at them. Ah, 
Ah, she's even a small girl. You know, one of my mentors was saying that her mother told her, don't ever assume you are older than anybody. You will be so surprised. You know? Okay, okay. You will be so surprised how, how some people will be far, far older than you with the way they are looking. A complete woman is the one who respects others. You value other people. You value other people. Because a, a, a pillar is a valuable thing. And so people value it. And it, it is the value of any structure, any building. Once the value is removed, that building has come down completely. So you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself and know who you are. Okay, some people are trying to say something. Can you wait until um, question time? Don't worry, I will take, I'm seeing all the chats. I would, I would refer to those things so that we will not be distracted. I think I have a very short time to go. So, you know, and also a, 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 a complete woman is the one who wants to please God at all times. She wants to please God. You know, some of us, we say that we do not care. I, I always like to balance my message. When I say, don't care what people say about you, blah, 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 blah. I always like to balance it. Some people, they are doing the wrong thing and then they don't even care what people are saying about them. A, a complete woman is the one who knows when she's wrong and she knows when to apologize. So that people can depend on you. So that they would know, ah, when she's wrong, she knows the right time to have, not the one that would be wrong. And then she'll still be doing both face. She doesn't want to listen to anybody. She doesn't want to, you know, if you read the book of Proverbs, Proverbs deals with people like that. He said a fool is the one that would not want anybody to talk to her or to him. But the wise would always want to hear from people. We are not saying that we should live based on people's opinion. But when you have the spirit of God in you, you too, you will know the right time to apologize when people complain about something. So a complete woman is the one that treats people well, who does not care about what people say about her. And a complete woman, on the, on, on the other hand, is the one who knows the right time to care about what people say. So let me tell you, if one, two, three, four, five people are saying the same thing about you, it is very likely that heaven is saying the same thing. Very likely that heaven is saying the same thing. So your mother is saying the same thing about you. Your brother is saying the same thing about you. Your friends are also complaining about the same thing. I think it is time to look into that situation so that you will not use your hand to destroy what God has planned for you. A complete woman is not the one who is particular about material things. She doesn't have a shoe. She can do anything to get it. She doesn't have a job. She's not the person who's sleeping her way to the top. A complete woman is not the one who is sleeping away to the top. Some women, they can give their body to get what they don't have. A complete woman does not do that. She wants what God will give her. And if God refuses to give her things, she doesn't want it. She doesn't want anything that God does not want to give her. She is ready to wait on God and to allow God to bless her with what he wants to bless her with. She believes that if she doesn't have something, then it's not right. It's not the right time for her to have it. If she has asked that God and God did not provide it the right way, then it is not time for her. She knows when the devil is bringing an alternative and she knows when to actually stay off that thing. Hallelujah. So a complete woman is the one who desires to fulfill purpose. She just wants to do the will of God. She just wants to stand and stand for righteousness. You know, she wants to just she wants to just please her maker. She's not she doesn't care if she's even in a relationship. All she wants to do is God, I just want to do your will. If you give me a husband, good. If you give me children, good. If you don't give me, I am okay. Yes, we are human. Sometimes once in a while the feelings will come, all those things will pop up in our heart. But when we know who we are in Christ, then we know that our life is not only about those things alone. I was talking about Eve when I started. I said Eve was thinking that if, when she ate the food, that it was about herself alone. It's about her eyes opening. Eve did not know that inside of her, 
our destinies, generations that people would never meet her, but that a decision would, would, would affect their lives. Eve did not know. The devil, the, the, the serpent, you know, cunningly deceived her and make her see herself as herself alone. Because she believed that she was the only one standing. She was the only one that was eating the food. But the moment she collected the food and she ate it, she was eating it for you, she was eating it for me. That is why we find ourselves in the challenge that we are in today. There are decisions you will take in your life that will affect generations to come. There are seeds inside of you. There are generations inside of you. You must be careful the kind of decisions that you make. Your life is too small to be the purpose of your life. I will repeat that again. Your life is too small to be the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life is greater than you, the single you that you are looking at. Your life is too small to be the reason why you came to this earth. So before you give your body to get that shoe, to get that phone, to get that job, remember that you are doing that thing for your generations and your generations to come. There are some of your children and your grandchildren, some of your great grandchildren that will not meet you. Some generations, your, 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 your generations to come, maybe the 10th generation after you, they may not meet you. It's not, it's not even possible for them to meet you. Your great, 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 you have stories. Your great, 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 great grandchildren. They will only see your picture. But whatever choice you make now will affect them in the future. Imagine when Ruben was sleeping with his father's concubine. He thought he was the only one sleeping with his father's concubine. He thought he was the only one, you know, committing the sin of fornication on his father's bed. He thought he was the only one, but he took that decision for all of his generations. When he was sleeping with his father's concubine, he did it alone. He was sleeping with that woman alone. But when the consequence was going to come, he did not suffer it alone. Generations after him suffered the consequences of what he did. So many of the Reubenites died. They were born and they died in that curse. All thanks to Moses that came and said, let Reuben live and not die. It was at that point that the Reubenites got their deliverance. But there are many of them who did not meet Reuben, but they were partakers of the curse that he left for them because of the singular act that he did all alone by himself. You forget what the, the carrying of it. You are carrying generations with you. You are carrying the lives of other people with you. When you are on that, on that fornication bed, you are taking off your pants, you are taking off your bra in front of that guy. You are taking it off for generations that are inside of you, both biologically and the ones that are connected to your destiny, that are not your biological children. Everyone on the surface of the earth have, you know, everyone has destinies that are connected to her and to him too. Because I realize that we have some men in the house we have generations that are connected to us, not necessarily our biological children. There are people that if we fail, they fail. If we fail, they, they may not come to the knowledge of, 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 the, of the truth of Christ. So we have to be careful as pillars. We have to be careful as women. Before you go there and, 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 and start mingling with those, those people, you need to ask yourself, does this glorify the name of God? Am I doing this? To please God or to please human beings? It must come to a time when you have to ask yourself that question. Am I doing this so that I can look good in front of man? Or I'm doing this to look good in front of God? See, when God is with you and everybody is against you, you are aimed for success. But when everybody is with you and God is against you, failure is guaranteed. There is nothing you can do. So always your prayer should be, Father, be with me. Always let your eyes be on me. Always smile on me, God. I don't want to please human beings. And at the same time, I don't want to be unruly. Because in the bid not to please human beings, some human beings want the best for you. They want you to do the will of God. And many of us, because I don't want to please human beings, I want to do my thing. And then you are doing your thing. You should be able to recognize between people 
who are pushing you towards moments of your purpose and those who are taking you far away from it. As a woman, you must have a discerning spirit, a discerning spirit that can help you to live a life, a complete life in Christ. A discerning spirit that can give you the strength to ride on even in the face of challenges. I know some of us have been battered with words, negative words here and there. Our parents have spoken bad words to us. Our family members, they've called us that we cannot amount to anything. But listen to me. Even some people is their spouse that has spoken to them, has, has called them names, has battered them emotionally with words. But you know what? It's time to search into scripture and hear what God has to say in Ephesians chapters 1 and 2. If you read Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, you will see everything that God has said about you in the scripture. And so what anybody is saying is their own opinion. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. They have the right to say whatever they like. But I am not going to, be, I'm not going to base my destiny on what anybody is saying. I'm going to base my destiny on what God has said. So if there's anybody in the house that you have been battered with words, you don't even know who you are anymore. People have called you names. They said you can never amount to anything. You can never be a better person. You can never do this. They've called you all sorts of names. I want you to go after this program. Go and open Ephesians chapters 1 and 2. And then read those two chapters and write out everything that God has said about you in those chapters. I am blessed. I am a royal priesthood. I am the called of God. Write everything down. If you need to type it, type it, type it in bold letters and post it all over your rooms so that you can always see these things and declare it every day. In a short time, it will become your reality. And all the other voices will fade away from your mind. Only the voice of God will stand. You know, only the word of God will stand. Only the word of God will stand. Because what you continually speak becomes your reality. Somebody will say that if you don't have power, you should have mouth. You don't have power, please have mouth. Your mother may be saying negative words to you and you cannot even reply. Then use your mouth to deliver yourself. Use your mouth to deliver yourself from everything that they have said concerning you. It is time to stand as a woman and stand sure. It is time to see yourself as, as, as a special person. It is time to see yourself as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Hallelujah. I want you to say to yourself, I am a co-creator with God. I want you to say to yourself, I am a co-creator with God. And if you believe that, you will continue to live in the fullness of that. You will continue to live in the fullness of that. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree into our lives that heaven will open upon us from today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let your fitness be in God, not in your job, not in the man that you marry, not in the kind of car you drive, not in the kind of house you live, not in the nation you live in. Nothing, anything, let your completeness be in God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your eyes will be open to see who you are in Christ. You will find your identity and heaven will reckon with you in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not lose your identity. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will continually be a pillar to your family, to your generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have been doing anything that you are not happy about, from today, you lose appetite for those things. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if there are names they have called you, if there are words they have spoken to your life that is making you feel less of yourself, I decree into your life that your identity changes from today. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every negative word that has been spoken to you, heaven wipes them off in the name of Jesus. And from today, you begin to build your future based on what the Lord has said about you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Father, we give you all the praise. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you so much, Nasma. So it's time for a um, question and answer. 
we have just 10 minutes to ask question and answer. So if you have question, can you kindly of drop it uh, in the chat box? To avoid distraction, we would have asked you to unmute yourself and ask questions, but we want to avoid um, distractions and internet transmission. So please put your questions in the chat box. Thank you so much, Ma. People, this is awesome. I'm already seeing people being commenting on the chat box, and I'm sure, I'm very sure that we are all blessed because I am very blessed. I have my jotter here and I've jotted a lot of things because I need to go back, look at my notes. I need to listen to this again. Thank God we are recording it and it will be live on YouTube. We are going to upload it on YouTube and presently it's live on Facebook. So I'm going to sit down and listen again and pray all this into my life and watch also. And I'm sure many are also blessed. So if you have any question, you can just put it in the chat box so that our mommy can attend to it. Somebody was asking a question, question that time. I didn't really get it. it. was talking about hearing God or something. So if the person can please um, ask again, maybe put it in the, in the chat box so that we can see it. Okay. Person was saying, I was saying, okay, sorry. Let's go there to the video for the rest of the day. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't really remember what that was. Oh, okay. I think I was saying that sometimes when you hear, when you hear, Sometimes you could hear that somebody is the will of God. And we must not forget that we are dealing with human beings. Because somebody is the will of God and you know how God speaks to you and you hear God clearly does not mean that everything will go smoothly. You know, somebody goes to the person saying, sorry, I did not hear anything. It doesn't mean that you didn't hear God. Well, I think I was making an illustration. I was, taking, I, was, I was making an illustration and that was it. That was what I was saying. You know, that sometimes you can hear God as much as it's not okay for us, you know, as female to go and when we, when we hear God, it's not okay for us to go and be telling the person that uh, I heard that God said. Of course, when you hear God, that somebody is the will of God for you, you have to continue to pray. You have to continue to pray. Okay, that's it. Okay, the, your question is, if you hear, the, you hear that what is the will of God as a lady, I don't know if I'm getting the question. If that is the question, please continue to pray. Personally, I would say continue to pray. Oh. Continue to pray. You don't have it. See, if God has revealed to you, God that has said that um, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord, he will speak to that person. Maybe God is preparing you for that person. Because sometimes the person that is coming to meet you may not be the person that you know would, may want to really come person like there's a movie we did a short movie we did for four years the sister had seen okay how do you break from hot cause okay 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 the, the the lady had heard god a long time ago she she's richer than the guy more you know influential than the guy but the guy was just a school teacher but the lady had heard god a long time ago she just went to meet said to meet her pastor see this is what i heard though but I'm, I'm, my brother has not come apparently the brother too had heard god but because he was feeling less of himself, he couldn't come and meet the, the sister. Eventually, God, God sharp and invited the brother to go and talk. It's usually very demeaning when a lady goes to propose to a guy or you say, I heard God, I am my husband. It's usually very, very, very demeaning. It reduces your worth, honestly. I have heard some guys that have come and say, ah, I don't know some ladies, or I don't know this lady, she came and she said, God said, Okay, okay, you're getting confused, go to God. See, if God is the one that spoke to you, whatever confusion that is in your mind, go back to him. If you hear him the first time, you will hear him again. You will hear, a lot of things can make us, conf can make us, can make us get confused about what we hear from God. And the reason being that we are dealing with human beings. 
Human beings are full of flaws. We are full of errors. Sometimes somebody will hear God and it will look as if you were lying about it. What about a pastor that, that, that was ministering? And he says there's somebody here. Somebody has hurt you, a close family member, and you have made up your mind to kill the person, kill his children, and then kill yourself. If you are here, come out. And the lady never came out. She never came out. You know that that pastor will look as if, okay, he's just saying things from his head. Because you hear God does not mean that everything will go on smoothly. Because you are still dealing with human beings. We are full of flaws. A person that you hear God today about can start misbehaving and start doing some things and confusion will fill your heart. You will go back to that God and ask, God, what do I do about this situation? I heard you clearly. Should I go on or I should stay aside for now? That doesn't mean that God did not speak. That doesn't mean that you did not hear God. Human beings are full of flaws. We can, we can, we can, make, we can make, make mess of you know, what God has spoken to us about. God can tell somebody, go and do this. And the person becomes very rebellious and disobedient just because he had heard God. The person may be doing what God has asked him to do or how to do, but the person may be doing it the wrong way. So we, we, should, we must not forget that even in every instruction that God is giving us, human beings are involved. God is saying, do, do this. And then you call people to yourself and say, ah, God has asked me to do this, so I need help, destiny helpers, I need helpers. So. And then they came, and all of a sudden, all of them, they, they refuse to, to join you again. They are working out of you, you know? And then they are, work, they, they are not starting you in this, in what you are doing. It will look as if you didn't hear God. You will ask God questions. Did you even call me at all? Did you even speak to me? There are many pastors who have asked God the question. Did you call me? He just said, it's looking like I heard myself, you know. So go always learn to go back to God instead of getting worried about um, situations, instead of getting worked up about things. Okay, somebody said, how can one combine pleasing God, career, family, and all other things and still please God without wavering and serving him effectively? All these things, are they are, they, they are achievable. These things are, it is very possible. We, I know people who are career people, they have a family, they are pastors, they have things, they know, they juggle, the grace of God is there for you. The grace of God is there for you. You can do all, you, you don't, look, don't see it as something too big to achieve, something too hard to achieve. There are great women of God who have families, they have their business, they, they have their careers, and yet, they are doing the will of God. You just have to plan. Plan your life and ask God to help you. With God on your boat, you are ready to go. You don't have any problem. Learn to talk to God like he is your friend. Learn to talk to God like he's your friend. Learn to tell him your heart desire. Learn to always talk to him. You know? Like he's right there beside you. Okay. Um, somebody said, how do you break free from the hurt caused by the past relationship you are convinced is going to lead to marriage and all of a sudden fell apart? Yes. There are, if I, if I should start telling you my story of how many relationships <laughs> that, um, that went south, at least I know of, I know of three that I knew that was going to end in, in, in marriage. I was too sure. But all of a sudden, everything just went, you know, went, went south. One thing I want that person to know is that that person that has walked out of your life is not the best thing that can happen to you. That person is not, when you start seeing human being as the best thing that can happen to you, that's when you keep, the heart will not, will not go on time. There is no human being that is the best thing that can happen to you. Human beings will walk into your life and they will walk out. But when God is your totality, when God is the center of your life, when human beings walk into your life and they walk out, yes, it's going to be painful. Yes, it's going to be hurtful, but you are going to get over it over time. There is one thing that God has given to us is time. Time heals wounds. Time helps us to get over situation. Let time ride over it. And in the meantime, continue to build your relationship with God. You would ask yourself in the future, after you are married and you are settled with the right man, and you'll be asking yourself, so what was my problem? Why did I want to kill myself over that person that left me? 
And that is what I'm saying to myself right now. I will keep saying, oh my God. So what was wrong with me then? Why did I go to that guy's office and I was crying because he, he broke up with me? I went to his office, I was crying, I was begging him. And he left me in his office and he said, when I finish crying, I should, I should, I should tell him. I belittled myself. I did not know who I was in Christ. I went to his office. He sent me a, a text message to break up with me. And I went to his office to go and beg. I was crying like a baby. And then he told me, he said, when you finish crying, call me. So at that point, it dawned on me that I have actually messed myself up. And so now that I'm married, I'm settled in my home. God has settled me. I was asking myself, my husband, the man I married now is better than that guy. Why did I want to kill myself over that guy then? Time, let time, let time heal your wound. Let time pass over situations in your life. You will realize if you think you cannot do without something, let time pass over it. You realize that you didn't need it in the first place. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I don't know Amen. if I missed out on anything. On that note, I say thank you very much. God bless you powerfully. Thank you so much, Ma. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. Thank you, Ma. Please, can we do the chat box and tell mommy thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. God, God be praised. We'll give glory to God for everything. Hey, somebody said that question is not Thank you so much, Ma. I can drop my email. I can drop email on the chat box. I can drop my email on the chat box. You can email me with your question. If there's any other question I did not answer. I will answer. drop it there you can so that we will not um we will not spend all the time because of the second speaker. Let's respect people's time. Yes, yes, ma. You, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank so you very much. Email. Yeah, that's my email. You can um you can mail me. All right, ma. Thank you. Yes, so you yeah. can just chat mommy up on Ayolara Omolara Ayola Omolara at gmail.com. She will always answer your question. So you can chat her up on the email she dropped in the chat box. Thank you so much. We personally, I am blessed. Like I am blessed. Thank you so much, Ma. We are very grateful. Yes, Ma. We are grateful, Ma. All right. Without wasting our time, we will go to the second ministration. Uh, mommy, uh, <coughs> Margaret Olan Rewaji will be speaking on a graceful pillar. Yes. Okay. Our pillar, pillar, give it to you so you to read that now. Like, you help us read our Bible. Please quickly. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, Thank God for the progression of the meeting. I've been very blessed by the um, meeting. The next person that will be having to bless us by the grace of God is Dr. Margaret Olare Waju, and she's a PhD holder, a master's holder, and a PSC accounting holder. Um, she's a chartered accountant. <laughs> wow, a senior lecturer and an accomplished author in, and in, uh, she's also an inspirational speaker and the acting head of the Department of Management Accounting at Durban University of Technology, South Africa. She's a business accountant in practice under the Southern African Institute of Business Accountants. She's also the convener of Richly Endowed Youth Forum and currently on a sensitization project to schools where she delivers transformational talks and donates her book to their libraries. She's actively married with children. Um, reading her biography for me has inspired me and is a blessing already. Please welcome with me once again, Dr. Margaret Olari Wajo. You're yeah, welcome, ma. So much. Thank you. You're welcome, uh, ma. I'm so sorry for taking much time. No, that's fine. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate God in the life of uh, Mrs. Omolara, the first speaker. In fact, you, you said it all and 
I pray that the Lord Almighty will water these words in our hearts. In Jesus. I I will also want to God in the life of my sister, Sister Bidemi. Uh, we met, I think, um, mid middle of this year, and um, the Spirit of God connected us together. Let me just put it like that. I thank God for this this vision, and thank God because God has been joining with you and um, this impactful session. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. To all my sisters here, Jesus brought us together this afternoon. Without Jesus, we might not know each other. So I appreciate you all for having me. Thank you so much. And um, I give God the glory for making this a reality. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, the giver of light, the ancient of days, the one who is the word himself. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful hour. Thank you for your grace that has found us from wherever we might be. Thank you because you gave your life for us to be able to enjoy your grace. Lord, we thank you. You have given us what we do not deserve. It is because you gave your son Jesus. That is why we are here today. Lord, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank mm -hmm. you for this opportunity to be used of you. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this vision. Thank you for the Pillars group. Lord, we appreciate you. For the wonderful sisters here, we give you all the praise. Lord, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that God, this conference, it is evident that you are here in our midst. We pray that God let your presence continually be made manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray this season now, oh God, turn my tongues to the tongues of fire. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, speak mm -hmm. a word that will penetrate into the heart of people. Mm -hmm. Lord, we are not here to just waste our time. We are here to do what is pleasing unto you. Lord, please manifest your power in our lives in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, I submit myself under your usage. I say, God, who am I? Lord, I want these people to hear you from me in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Blessed be your name, Lord. And at the end of the race, oh God, we all make it to heaven mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. We will not derail on this path in the name of Jesus. All our lives shall continue to showcase the grace and the mercy of God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much for having me once again. I've been given a topic, a graceful pillar. And as I've been preparing for the topic, a song has been dropping in my heart. I didn't know the what is of the song in total, but I shouted with my sister if she can assist me. Your grace has found me just as I am. Please, if you are here, please, can you help me with that song? Let's sing that song. Yes, handed God alive in your end. Oh, singing majesty, majesty, Forever I am changed in the presence of, of your majesty. Thank you so much. I, I pray the Lord we accept our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Because Amen. of my time, because Amen. my sister told me to link my talk to financial literacy, entrepreneurship. I have a lot to say, but I know by the grace of God, and I used to say I'm a top party also. Uh, I, by the grace of God, I am trusting God I'll be able to bring everything together in short time, pass across the message of God for us this evening. So I've been given a graceful pillar to talk on, a graceful pillar, a gracious pillar. Anyhow, we call it what is most important in it is the two words, grace, and pillar, grace 
and pillar. My sister has, um, our mommy, Mrs. Omolar, has defined a pillar for us. So I just have this brief definition. I won't go deep into that. She has made us to know what a pillar is in the house, what it does, and um, if there is no pillar, what can happen to a house? So I won't go back to that. But I have here that a pillar is a tall vertical structure of stones, woods, or metals. It is used for a building or as an ornament or monument. And what it does is that it stabilizes and acts as a load bearing function. It performs a load bearing function and it stabilizes. I've been given a test to use and um, our test is what every one of us I know we are aware of, which is um, Proverbs 31. Uh, verse 10 to 31. And all I will say this evening revolves around that, but I will digress and you see, we'll push it into different aspects and at the end of the day, we'll come into a conclusion to let us know what a graceful pillar is all about. So I, I said a graceful pillar has both heavenly and earthly traits. A graceful pillar has both heavenly and earthly traits. So I, 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 I would define grace, which we all know. Grace is, the, is God's riches at Christ's expense. So grace is undeserved favor. It's a sacrificial gift to someone who has not earned it and cannot pay it back. So, and I know for us to even be alive today is because of the grace of God. So every one of us here, we are graceful pillars. So I am starting here by saying, a graceful pillar has both earthly and heavenly traits. So it's not because, okay, I want to make heaven, then you don't have the earthly traits to live a life that we take as many as possible people with you to that heaven. And if you are a graceful pillar also, you can't say, okay, I want to live my life. And you will not um, live a quality life that will take you to the eternal life, a life that does not end, eternity. So if you, are, if you are really graceful, you have the earthly trait and you have the heavenly trait. And I want to also add that a graceful pillar is well-rounded. My sister has said this also, you are complete in Christ. You are well-rounded, you are all in all. You are all in all. You know, to, to bring it from where she stopped, I would like to say that you need to discover who you are so that you can deliver the destiny that has been embedded in you. So that's the summary of my sister's message to me. Let me just know who I am to be able to deliver that grace that has been embedded in me to be able to deliver the purpose of God in my life on this mm -hmm. planet. So as a lady, you will note that if you, if you monitor ladies very well, if you examine yourself very well, you will know that you have two or three outstanding traits. You just have some things you, you can do exceptionally, not one, not two. It's only if you are not taking time to study yourself. So God has invested so much in the life of ladies, in our ladies, our sisters, God has oh, invested in our lives and is expecting his return on investment. It's not a wasteful person. It does not waste resources. And for, he, for you to be able to utilize all the resources he has embedded in you, you need to work under grace. You need to grow in grace. You need to sustain your grace. And that is what we want to discuss this evening. I have not read my test because majority of what I will be discussing will take us back to the test and it's a long test. So we'll come back to it as we discuss this point. So I will first want to start by giving us the characteristics of a graceful pillar. I've defined pillar, I've defined grace. I've told you a graceful pillar, they have both earthly and heavenly traits. Now, what are the characteristics of a pillar? So if, if you are a pillar or not, indeed, at the end of this teaching, you should be able to judge yourself because being true to yourself is the main solution to the problems of, the, of this act. If you are true to yourself, your problem is half solved because we know what to address per time. So number one thing, characteristics that I will discuss 
with you this evening is she's praiseworthy. She's praiseworthy. And my test is from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28 to 29. It says, our children arise up and call us blessed. Our husband also, and, our, and he praised her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. But thou excellest them all. Many daughters, they, but you, you stand out, you exempt them all. So if you are a graceful pillar, you are worthy of praise, you are worthy of honor, what you do, you attract praise to God Almighty on your behalf. What you are doing is touching life and we can say, oh, we thank God for bringing this lady to life with me. That is when you can certify yourself, oh, I'm a graceful pillar. Even your husband, your spouses, for those of, of us that are married, should be able to say, thank God, I am lucky to find this woman. This is indeed a missing read. This is indeed the favor from God. This is indeed the favor of God to me. So you are praiseworthy when you are indeed a pillar, a graceful pillar. And the second one is she's valuable. Oh, she's valuable. And I, will ask, I want to ask you, it might be arch, it might be blunt. I, will ask, I would like to ask you this evening or this afternoon that, who are you? Who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you carry? Do you know what you identify, what you represent? Do you know your identity in God? My sister was saying, if you are complete, if I did the cornerstone, you don't sleep around. Do you know your value? Do you know your what? That's, that's a question I used to ask myself. What is your what? This asking yourself, what is your value does not mean you are proud. You know, when the value of something is not identified, you misuse it. When you don't know what you are living for, you live anyhow. But when you know what you carry, no situation of life can sweep you away. When you know what you carry indeed, your value, your what, you can, you can, you, in fact, you know there are some ladies that boys cannot even talk any out to. I don't know if I have witness in the house. That they know that, no, you, you don't, you, they can't just, you know, there are some ladies that boys will punch their breasts, punch everything. Hey, 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 you just be flirting with people all around. But you can see some ladies, you know, you can't, there are some jokes you can't do with them. Not that they are too arch, not that they are um, not friendly, but they know their what. They know their word. That doesn't mean they don't play with people. She's valuable. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Do you know that you, you, you know your price? If you know your price, how do you undo this price? Do you guide it jealously? How do you undo this price? Verse 23 of this um, Proverbs 31 also says, her husband is known in the gate, when he is seated amongst the elders of the land, how can your husband be known because of you? That means <laughs> there are so many things in that. That is very loaded. For your husband to be known in the gate just because she marries you, that means you are a woman of great virtue. You know, there are some women, if we start mentioning them, that even their ministry was known to the world because of them. This is what we are saying. That means as a woman, as a graceful pillar, you are not a non-entity. Can make two plus. Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm uh, sorry for that. I think um, my internet is um, breaking, but I'm back now. So I was saying a woman that the husband will be traced to give honor, 
that will be a, a blessing to the husband. So that is not a lazy woman. It's not a woman that will be messing around. Is indeed a graceful pillar. A woman, you don't. You, I, I used to say, you don't need to express yourself. I am Margaret. Uh, I am Mrs. Olari Waju. I'm full of grace. Grace of God on you expresses itself to everyone. Expresses itself to everyone. So as a graceful pillar, that means anything you do, you must stand out. If you are seen in the university, that means as a graceful pillar, you mustn't settle for less. For the for less, you mustn't settle for the bottom. You must be the best in all you do. Don't say because I'm active in church, then other things are not. You need all to be complete. To indeed be a graceful pillar, you need all. And I pray the Lord Almighty shall give us the grace to indeed know our value and be what God really wants us to be in Jesus' name. The third one is she's trustworthy. My sister, are you trustworthy? If I tell you the secret of my life, won't I see it on Facebook the other day, the next day? For those of us that are married, can your husband even, if you have disagreement or sit put in at home, I hope it's not on your status, it will be bringing. If I commit contribution into your hands, sorry if I'm sounding funny and making it practical because we are ladies, those are the things we do. Okay, maybe six of us are on contribution, you know, all these things, we call it a job, and we put it in your hand. Hope we will find it there when we need the money. If you are the church secretary, we put some things, fellowship secretary or treasurer. Hope you are trustworthy. Hope you are trustworthy, a great pillar. Proverbs 31, 11, 12 says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and more, not evil all the days of her lives. Not only her husband, everybody around you, do they see you as a woman of integrity, as a lady, as a pillar of integrity? This is a question, is a point to ponder on. And I pray the Lord Almighty shall give us the grace to make amendment in any way we be found guilty of these words in Jesus' name. The fourth one is that she's kind. A graceful pillar is not wicked. That's just the meaning of that. You know, if, if you if you bent on something and, ah, no, 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 no. Ah, I'm not going to take this. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to show her that I'm this and that. I am this, this. Check yourself. Are you indeed a graceful pillar? A graceful pillar is a kind pillar. Proverbs 31 verse 26 says, she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. It's not a pillar. It's not a lady that um, somebody will be passing through a situation and say, oh, this is your end. Oh, I know this is how you will end it. I know you are finished. Hey, no, 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 no. A graceful pillar. You know, by the virtue of my career, I, I have a lot of mentees. I'm a lecturer. I used to tell myself, there won't be any day I will tell a child that that child will not succeed. Because God has not created you a failure. What do you say to your younger ones? And if there's anyone here that they've said so many things to, into your life, that is their own opinion. That is not God's opinion over your life. They said that you cannot amount to anything. That is their own. The, you let your life tell them and reverse what they've said. A graceful pillar. And because they've said it into your life, don't repeat it back. What? go a long way. It's like egg. When it breaks, it goes to any length, any angle that you might not, it's, 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 you can't erase it. You can't reverse it. That's why I say graceful pillar. You think before you talk. You think before you say it. You think before you act. Act of greatness. Show mercy. Look at Dockers. Our kindness brought, us, brought this Tabitha back to life. Your kindness Ushers people to you. You should be people that both older and younger can move to you, no matter your achievement. I used to say it, your achievement is, 
is the starting point for some people. What you want to achieve, some people are already there, they've gone past that level. Praise the Lord. Now, kindness denotes the deeds of devotion, favor, and loveliness. You, what I'm saying, if I'm saying a graceful pillar is kind, is that you, you, are, you are loving to be around. People just want to come and meet you, you know? A few weeks ago in the church, we had a praise. I think last week we had praise and worship. A sister said, you, you might not know me. And sincerely, I didn't know her. She said, she has been telling everybody, Dr. Lara, Dr. Lara, Dr. Lara, our life is touching me. And I didn't know this lady. Brethren here, I'm not praising myself. I'm just giving you an example out of many. Be someone that even your life afar can minister to, can bring to church, can bring to Christ. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the, the fifth one is that a graceful pillar is classy. Don't say because you want to make heaven and you are looking tattered. No, you must be presentable. That is true. It's in the Bible. Proverbs 31, verse 21 to 22. She's not afraid of the snow for her husband, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is sick and purple. A graceful pillar is someone that is presentable. Neat ear do. Make sure that the children are looking good. I'm not saying, you know, our first speaker, Mama has also talked about this. I'm not saying you should go and now inconvenience yourself. But what I'm saying is ensure that the little you have, you appear neat and presentable. You don't know when the king is coming. Make yourself ready. For those that are single here, let's be factual. No man, no man wants to marry a tattered woman. Your appearance at the first insight can speak to that man, even if he's God sent. I know if he's the God's plan, it will surely come to pass. But can send them away if you are not careful. Be, be, be neat and be presentable. I'm not saying we are looking at the outward appearance alone. Be presentable and don't be too flashy because you want to be beautiful. We are talking about she's classy, eh? not exposure of nakedness, nudity, no. Not exposure of nakedness, not until you open up your bra, your buttocks before you are beautiful, no. Be a woman, be a pillar of your own class is not pride. You are classy. Your dressing represents God, your author of the author of your life, the honor of the grace of God upon your life. That is what we're talking about. And you have to you have to encourage yourself. Tell yourself you are so pretty. You know, I just authored a book on that. Tell yourself. No, you don't need people to tell you you are pretty. You need to tell yourself you are not ugly. God has not created anybody to be ugly. I pray the Lord Almighty will help us and give us the grace to be pleasing unto him and not to misuse his grace upon our lives in Jesus' name. So our outward adornment reflects our inner demeanor. Our appearance and dress reflect the internal decorum, your, the discipline you carry, the dignity in your life. It expresses it. She's habitually and characteristically industrious. You, are, you, you can, it's not that you make your fashion life to now be a burden to another. We'll still get to that because my sister said I should talk about entrepreneurship and financial literacy. I pray the Lord will help us this evening in Jesus' name. So fine clothing is affordable and they are appropriate priority. Don't, don't think it's not part of it. Be neat, be presentable. The sixth uh, characteristics of a uh, graceful pillar that I have here is that she's compassionate. You know, this goes with, with um, kindness, but I will express this that um, a graceful pillar is selfless. I hope you are not selfish. We need to ask this question. You know, uh, there was a gathering in my house yesterday and I was telling them the, 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 the message God passed through across to me during the lockdown how God instructed me to reach out to people with another characteristics or another uh, dimension of meat. And it was so funny. That night, God just woke me up and I was hearing it clearly. I told my husband, today we are obeying this. 
And I got to the market and the person that would sell the meat to me, I didn't know that was why God sent me to go and do that. And the person told me, you Christians, do you guys give? It was, she, she, he was arguing with me. You are a Muslim. You must be a Muslim. That, if you, are, you know, when she was packing the meat in bits, she was like, do you want to go and sell? I said, I'm not selling, I'm giving. And she was like, I, what are they done? You are giving them. And so many and many and many experiences like that. I said, you will be the first one that we do that. Oh, and I now sat him down that he said, we Christian, we will only be introducing Jesus, that we are not ready to meet the need of people. We only be, accept Jesus, accept Jesus, accept Jesus. Are you compassionate? You can bless people with one naira and meet their need. So you don't need to have millions to be compassionate. I pray the Lord will help us in this regard in Jesus. In Proverbs 31, verse 19 to 20 says, she laid her hands to the spindle and her hands holds the staff. She stretches out her hands to the poor, yet she reached forth her hands to the needy. There's one verse, verse of the Bible that says, he who lends to the poor, lends to the Lord. God, I want to lend to you. Then reach out to the poor. Be compassionate, not bam bam ni moyo. If I'm food, my family is food. I can feed my, my children. Oh, we have, what of your neighbor? Something happened to me. We have a tenant in our house and um, we made some pastries and in the rain, it was raining and this lady was heavily pregnant. I entered the rain, I walk up to her room, she's my tenant and I might not be bothered about maybe, she, no, but what is in me will not allow me to just, I was just pressurizing my heart to reach out to that lady. So I packed the meat pie inside the rain and I entered into the into, into her room. And this lady was like, she has not seen this before. That is raining, ma'am. You are not even sending your children. You are coming yourself inside the rain. I said, I have to give you this. And the next thing we saw on our status, it changed our mentality because the environment we have, giving might not be as we used to experience it at home. What was in our status? She said, she's in this house for a mission and for a purpose. And God is revealing it unto her. I know she tapped some things from that art of, com of compassion. So a graceful pillar is a, is, is a woman, is a pillar of good works. What are your good works? What do you do? You can't be preaching Christ and your life will not reach out to people. You grow when you reach out to people. I pray the Lord will help us and give us this grace in Jesus' name. Number seven is the cheese wise and understanding. A graceful pillar is a wise pillar. Hey, I used to say to myself, some ladies can act foolishly at times. In the way they handle their lives, in the way they handle matters, wisdom is from above. And when you have godly wisdom on you, if you are the youngest, you can rule any level or any age. You can rule, rule, you can rule any gathering successfully when you have the wisdom of God. I know what I'm saying. I won't go deep into this because my life is, is, an, ex, is, is an example of this in terms of what I witness at work. I don't know if I'm reaching out to someone here and you are just placed in a leadership position. The people under you think, Maybe you are young or you are not capable. My sister, ask for the wisdom of God and let the grace of God in you manifest. In your tenure, they will record achievement that has never been recorded in the history of that gathering, in the history of that association. The wisdom of God outshines others. You won't make mistakes. He guides your path. He tells you what to do and you do it part time. I pray the Lord Almighty, you know, we help us to use his wisdom to rule our world, to bring many people to God. You know, Proverbs 24, 3 to 4 says, by wisdom a house is built. How do you build your home? If it's scatter, it's scatter. You know, you know, there are some things you can just mend together by the wisdom of God. Even by the wisdom of God, you'll be able to perform your role as a good wife at home. Are you above the man? Or is the man above you and trying to press you down? By wisdom of God, things can change. 
And by understanding it is established by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Proverbs 41 says, the wise woman builds a house, but with her own as the foolish what tears it apart. May you not tear your home. May you not tear your life. May you not tear your destiny. Wisdom, when you have wisdom of God, you know when to talk. When you have the wisdom of God, you know what to say, when to talk, what to say, how to say it. I pray the Lord Almighty shall help us in Jesus' name. And the, the eighth characteristic is she is prudent. Mm. And this, she's prudent. <laughs> a graceful woman is not a wasteful woman. When everything that enters into your hand, you just finish it in a tinkle of an eye. You are not graceful enough. Let me just put it like that. Because the Bible made us to know if you want to be a virtuous woman, and it's not because, um, okay, we might be convenient. You know, I used to listen to Mama Funke, the aunties and um, women, Adejumo. She will tell you, I can't buy this. It's, it's only when it is on sale that I buy it. And it's not because I cannot afford it. She said, I have many people at the orphanage. So why should I just be spending lavishly, spending anyhow? And this will take me, because um, it will take me to a short slide. How you can be prudent. I won't make this too spiritual, because where that is my feed of uh, specialization, uh, all my life I've been on accounting. And um, to the glory of God, I'm a professional in many boards. So I, I recently I was invited for a financial literacy workshop and I said, I will share with, with you how you can save, how you can be financially literate. I know many of us are starters. We are just starting with our lives. Maybe we are fresh graduates or, but you can start with something, with something. You can handle money in such a way that can help others. Okay, the host is not permitting me to share my screen and um, where well, I have it in the PowerPoint slide, I don't know if you can permit me because um, I didn't have it in my note here. So a graceful, a graceful pillar thinks ahead and get ready. Our prior planning prevents her from poor performance. You are prudent with money, you are prudent with time, you are prudent with resources. A graceful pillar is not someone that can spend all the days gossiping hey gossiping gossiping that is why if you see so many graceful pillars they might not have many friends i'm not saying they have many enemies friends that hey 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 you are there you are everywhere what are you doing with your life you have precious time you are pre prudent with your life you have a lot to cover oats disabled participants screen sharing okay let's let's just move on and um, so plan your life as students for us that are students here can share now ma. plan your life is still saying the same thing because of time we might not worry but i can share this slide later with you to share with everyone plan your life plan your time Plan your destiny. There are times you need to build up what God has deposited in you to build up. You know, I was addressing some set of people. I said, you know, I can't just be coming to your office to, you know, maybe at work to just gossip about another people. I'm too busy for that. See, and sincerely, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. As graceful pillars, face your life, face what you do. Be the best in what you do. You can see our first speaker have watched a lot of our films where she participated. And um, she can't be someone that is wasting time all around that she'll be, able to, she'll be able to achieve that. And she's a married woman. You need to plan your time. This is holiday period, brethren. I've known what I want to use my holiday period for. I'm not saying you don't have life to go around, visit people be involved in people's life. I'm only saying the wasteful aspect as a graceful pillar, it is not, it is not found in you. 
And I pray the grace to be prudent in what we do in our life, in everything we do in our home, in our places of work, in our accomplishments, in everything we can do, the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. So be ready for the future. Let me wrap up that one by saying, please be prudent and be ready for the future. You know, there's, you don't get to the top by chance. It is by choice. And when you make this choice, there are sacrifices attached to this choice. The journey to the top, you climb the ladder of success step by step. And my sister said, don't sleep in around, you know, what God cannot give me, let me not have it. So if I know that it is God that will give me, he said, uh, when, you, when, when you are hardworking, you stand before kings, then I need to be hardworking and be diligent. And if I want to be diligent, I don't waste my time. I don't, when you waste time, you waste life. I don't know why I'm hammering on this. When you waste time, you waste life. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the next one is, she's industrious. She's industrious. She's here, she's there, she's here, she's everywhere, making good value, not just roaming around. Not just wasting destiny around. She's there on purpose. That's what I'm saying. Proverbs 31 verse 27 says, she look at where to the way of her husband and eateth not the bread of idleness. A graceful pillars are not idle pillars. I, I don't know how to say this one in English. Or what about delay? Human wash A graceful pillar is not idle pillar that will sleep from morning to night. Hey, hey, hey. No. It's dangerous for someone who carries a lot, it's very dangerous. And don't hide under the ministry and you are failing in another area. As a lady, be at home, do your responsibility at home. Don't dodge responsibility because, hey, I must go and preach tomorrow. No. Cook good food when you are supposed to cook. You are the one that has, you are a woman. I've told you a woman has both earthly and heavenly traits. You are the woman who, who carries life you are the one God has empowered. So you are industrious. You can make two plus two to be, to be four. Even if you are not employed on a salary basis, think of what you can do. Can I knit with woods? Can I make, be innovative, be creative? You know, when I got, first got into this country, I came with study give without pay. Nothing was working, you know, you know what I did? I went home, I took Ankara. I, I sell, I, you know, I entered the market, sell Ankara to people. There's no glory without story. So I should not fold my hands. God, you said you are with me in this journey and you can see now I cannot even feed myself. All the money I'm getting from my husband, I can only use it to pay rent. Can you see? You can't blame people for your life. There's no excuse for failure, for, for failure. Be industrious, be industrious. Think ahead, what can I do to feed this family? And Mama Dejuma used to say it, she said, gone are the days so that men will not put money down, you will not cook soup. That we women of these days, we cook the soup and you start to collect the money later. She, is, she has said a lot on how to build a woman. And I, well, I want you to please build your life and be industrious. Shun slothfulness. You know, I hate that with passion. Do this procrastination. It's also a real stage of laziness. You might not be lazy. When you grab it, you do it. But you do it today. You do it tomorrow. You do it next tomorrow. If you don't do it, God will replace that person. If God has made you, if God has invested so much in you, if you don't do it immediately as he commands you, the instruction, you are risking replacement. And may we not be replaced in Jesus' name. All those things you want to do, you want to write an exam, pick your book and read for it. You are meant to be the head. There is grace upon your life. Allow the grace to show. 
She must be capable, physically able, business smart. Sincerely, well, if you are not business smart, investment smart. Be smart with your life, be smart with what you do. And be prosperous. Don't think you are a second class citizen. Desire riches. We are not meant to be poor. Our God is not a God of poverty. Being poor does not take you to heaven. It can even be the, 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 the source of making you commit some sins by lying, stealing, and all that. Desire God has given you riches. He owns the castle, thousand of, you know, God owns the whole earth and the whole universe. You are meant to be rich. Put two plus two together. You know, I used to follow some people on Facebook. Ladies now, they make fascinators. They, they, are, they go into tailoring, you know, entrepreneurship. Equip themselves. If there's no job, be busy with something. Be busy with something. And if you want to go into academic line, continue studying. It's an investment. Invest into your life so that you can stand out. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want to quickly finish the last one. She's industrious, is the number nine, and the number 10 is she's fruitful. Proverbs 31 verse 1 says, give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her own works praise her in the gate. When we talk about fruitfulness, we are not talking about child-bearing alone. That's why some, some people get it wrong. You are fruitful in everything you do. You have a foundation. People are coming. You can see our mommy. She, you, you minister to life. Your word alone settles matter. Solve divorce cases. Just because of your advice, you are fruitful and it's recorded in heaven. All those good works, all those fruitful acts. Any vine that is not even bringing out fruit, it should be cut off. May we not be cut off in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 21, verse 39, 29 also says, Many daughters have done versions, but thou excellent them all. That means if you are a medical doctor, you have to be exceptional as a great superior. If you're a lecturer, you write papers like, and people will know that, no, you are there. You're a graceful pillar. It is possible. It's not meant for some people. What anybody can achieve that you, you, com, you covet, you can also achieve it. If you plan your life, you work with God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So that I can round up this part of, let me, in terms of that uh, prudency, let me go to what is, is it meant, what is meant by being financially literate. When you are financially literate, it means you can budget to manage money. Do you even have budget? As to see me so, every month I budget what I spend. And that is not today. That has started a long time ago. Sean impulse buying. Are you at that level already? Impulse, you have not planned for it. you just saw it and the ice is pushing you and the ice is taking it. You will get to that level, but that this season, if you are still in my own shoe, well, I'm talking based on my own, uh, what I am, I'm still, God is still building my life. I plan, I budget. And don't let me deceive you, check all these rich people. Move closer to them. Have you listened to Ibukwan, what she can be, be before? How she, Addresses people on how his son was saying, buy uh, the, this wallet for me, buy this for me, buy that for me. And she said, you, you don't need it now. Budget and teach your children to be responsible financially. You build riches. Those rich people don't spend anyhow. And that doesn't mean they are stingy. They give to touch lives, not to show off. Set your financial goals. I know 2020 is gone, so many challenges and all that. This is a new year coming. Set what do you want to be? What, what do you want to achieve by the end of 20, December 2021? God willing, we will not die. We will live to fulfill our days. Set financial goals. And pay bills. After paying bills, save money. Because you now want to set financial goals doesn't mean you should not live a good life. Pay your bills, buy good clothing, kiss and husband. Bless your husband with good, good suit. 
People will be looking at him. Ah, I can see this suit on you. Yeah, my wife, this is a gift from my precious gift or my precious wife. Pay bills, bless souls, and still save money. And okay, I'm doing this in the con in concept of where I gave this a basics of loan. Don't just borrow without any good reason. You know, people might be, and do just take it, pay me back whenever you have it. You know, you see, think before you borrow. I was listening to Baba Oyedepo yesterday before I. I, I joined the Dove um, television and she was saying she has, he, he has never borrowed in his life and he will not borrow. That's a level of faith. You can also covet that. He started from somewhere. We all know his story. Credit cards, you see, if you don't need it, don't take it because you spend more if you have credit card. As you look at me, well, I don't have one. Maybe, maybe it's because of the way I'm wired. Even though the bank said, come and take one, I don't need it. If I need it, I'll go and take it, but I don't know what I need it for now. I'm not saying you can't take credit. There are some economies that are based on credit, but on what basis? What is the motivation of the credit? Are you using credit card to eat KFC? Is that investment? What you will eat and they will ask you to go and start losing weight. Let's spend wisely. Then investment, how it works. Don't think that until you start from somewhere big, that's when you can start investing. That is why you need to have goals. You need to have goals. This is what I want to achieve. Look at your level. Your level one is the level five of others. That means you cannot compare your financial goals with another person. You get what I'm saying? You cannot. So financial, you know how investment works. Start small and be consistent, be committed, commit it into the hands of God. Give all your best and see how God will multiply it. Discouragement will come. There's nothing good that we not have stories from the beginning. You are just coming to the market. You need to make yourself known. There are challenges. There are times of secret tears. There are times that you pray the prayer of Anna. You just you be on your own. You cannot even know the prayer point. Your heart is just whispering. But it will surely work out. Go and ask for the successful people. It will surely work out. So if you want to be financially literate, mm -hmm. know how you earn. Know what you earn. Be specific so that you will not spend more than you earn. You can see how it goes. Earn. You spend. That means you can't spend what you cannot earn. That means you want to crash. That's the language. I'm very sorry. In accounting, that's the, the language. Is that, that crashing or we use liquidation? You know what you earn first. You know some people, they spend even before the money comes. You are tending towards liquidation or crashing. Then, then you spend, you save and invest. Spending comes before saving because you need to pay your bills. Then make sure you save, no matter how little from any income. You borrow when necessary. I've told you some economies are based on credit. You can borrow to acquire home loans and all that, you know, reasonable borrowing. Not borrowing for Ashwabi because of what? You know, a, a, a very close sister of mine invited me to an event and she said the, the the dressing code is these jeans. This might be funny, but that is me, and that is true. It is the truth. At that moment, okay, I had that weight, all my jeans, everything got too small for me. And I didn't have the jeans. I said, me, I will wear what anything I have. But I know if it is another person, you, you will just go and look for it at all costs on what basis. No, as a financial literate person, you don't go beyond your means. It's only if I could afford it then, then I quickly go to the market. But if I don't have no budgeted for it, it's not part of what I said I was achieved that time. Let the jeans be in the market, the event be on its own. And I gracefully grace the occasion. 
with what I have. And the last point here is protect the little you have. You know, that's why you need godly wisdom. Invest wisely. You have to protect the little you have. 90, Psalm 91, the spiritual insurance. Pray very well on everything you have and what you are gathering, that the enemy will not come and scatter it. Protect it. And when we are looking at the physical one, the accounting one, protect by ensuring the little you have. And what do I mean? I know there are some small businesses that we cannot go and insure. Oh, all right. There are some small businesses we cannot go and insure. But ensure that you have backup. And I pray the Lord will help us. I can email this slide to, to my sister if we want it to share with us. And um, I pray the Lord will help us and give us the grace to do all those things. Let me go back to my sermon. Sorry, I'm not here to give accounting um, talk, but my sister said I should just um, put it in into it. So how do we now grow in grace? To go back to a graceful pillar, briefly, God's grace and I've told these unmerited things, things that we are not qualified for and how can you make your life to be a graceful life that people will see that, you know, this is a woman of grace. The first thing I have yet is if you want to covet grace, John 1, 14b. John 1, 14b says, Jesus, the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. So if you want to grow in grace, look at Jesus. What is in the life of Jesus? Jesus was, that Bible verse, I think my internet was um, fluctuating again. The intent behind the death of Christ was to offer us forgiveness that you and I, we do not merit. Do you agree with me? So what is that thing? Who is that person that you cannot forgive, including yourself? My sister was talking about the past. There's nobody without past. Though. She shares some of her own. I have my own. Don't think everybody, we are all saints, no. That's why the Holy Spirit asked me to start with that song. His grace has found us just as we are. The grace found me just as you, what I used to be. The grace picked me up from the mud. That is why if you are looking at the past of someone to judge them, you are just wasting time. God can turn any life around. God can turn any life around. You know, on the cross, during crucifixion, Jesus' prayer was the forgiveness on those who put him there in the place of agony. He was, he was still praying. Sorry, I have a message here. How do I make you the host? What do I need to do? Can you please unmute? Yeah, you, you can just click on the name. There's a, there's a place oh. called more. Just click on the more, then you make in the old. There's a three dots close to my name or my husband's name. Just yeah. click on the three dots. You it see says more. make old. So, okay. Thank you for Thank you so much, teaching me that. Okay. Now, so forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive everyone around you. So the number one way to express grace is the ability to forgive. Because when you forgive, you open up your heart for greater things to come. Forgive yourself and move on. Forgive others and move on with your life. Have you been jittered? Jitted. You can only see the, the container. You don't know the content. God might have just given you a miracle of the year if you are just jitted to prepare you for the future. You can hear our mama. She says she's now happy and thanking God she married this man 
and not the other one that was just messing and um, not valuing her. So when you are jilted, it's, a, it's, it's an avenue for testimony. Brace up and move on with your life. Many people have been jilted before. No, you are not the first and you will not be the last. It happens. The second thing is mercy. At the life of Jesus, what can we see? Mercy is showing kindness to those in need. I've talked about it. I won't go deeper into this. We want to grow in grace, be merciful to everyone. Be merciful. He hit me and I'm hitting him back. Not found as a graceful figure. No, cannot be found in the life of a graceful pillar. And the third one here, if you want to grow in grace, service. Serve others. Serve God. If you want to be a good leader, be a servant. Serve. Invest in people's life as you are investing in your life. Invest in people's achievement. You know, I, by the grace of God, I was raised in a village. And I'm proud to say this. I'm not ashamed. There was an old woman in this village. Not my mom, not our relative, not in our street. I just knew this woman on the other side. You know what I did for this one? When I was young and I didn't, I didn't have money, what I do is that this is an old woman. You know, I'm talking about village where we have to go to the stream to fetch water. So I, you understand what I'm saying? I, do I have witness here? You have to go to the stream to bring water. That's what I'm saying. And I identify that this mama needs this help without informing me. I took it upon myself, even though I've, I've I think I've written where I can know that I'm in the polytechnic. I made it a point of duty to fetch water for this mama. You know, the, the season we still have tap water. In, in, in our villages then. The tap water will come maybe once a month. When this tap water comes, I will rush down to, so that she can have water to drink and put it in a separate um, keg. This mama has not requested for this service. I just chose to do that. Unknowingly to me that this woman is a, she's a mighty prophet. Unknowingly to me that she's a woman of God. The investment of that woman in, the, in my life journey, I, I can't quantify it. It's not what I can say with words. She's still alive, she, but she's very aged. Up to now, we are still on a good time. And she, can you believe that this mama is almost on, is even above 100 or almost 100 years. She still remembers, she still remembers those days. I will come from school, from polytechnic. I'll put water on my head. You know, my friends there, some of them were mocking me. You know, there are some CC that you cannot carry things on your head again. You, you are just carrying water all about. They were mocking them. Can they mock now? Invest in people's life. Choose to be kind and to show mercy if you want to grow in grace. You never know your angel. Maybe it's God will send it in form of wood. This woman I'm saying, is, she's more or less an angel to my life. I can't, I can't quantify her, her investment. In, in, up to today in my life. Be merciful. Be merciful. And serve. Serve. Serve others. Serve everyone. And most importantly, serve God. Service involves sacrifice. You need to, at least that time that I was taking water all around, and, I, and I, I loved my book. Not that I was not having things to do with my life. But God made it factual and make it to be working in such a way that I'm not failing because I'm, I'm doing that. You might not have money. In what way can you meet the need of people? Serve others. You know, Daddy Oyedepo shared one uh, experience with us and I'm going to share it with you. It can help a life. He said when he started his ministry, he has not been writing books and all that. He used to travel abroad for a program and all he does for that, to support that program is to carry the book of that man, the owner of the program, I've forgotten the name of this mighty man of God, and put it on his head and start selling for all those that we attend the program. And after he has been going year by year and God struck him and he had an encounter, 
after uh, on, the, on, on one of the editions of the program, and God told him, you will not only write books, you will write many books, and people also will gather to do this for you. He said in that year alone, he published 20, at least 20 books that year alone. That year alone. You can see how he, he tapped grace by investing, by serving others. How he tapped grace. And today you can just go to Amazon and type David Oyedeku and see a lot of books, countless. I pray the Lord will help us to do all these things so that we can really grow in the grace of God. Now, after you've known your characteristics as a graceful pillar, you know what to do to grow in this grace that will qualify you to be a graceful pillar. And this is, this, this is where I'll, I'll wrap it up. How do you now attract this grace? Maybe some of us are saying, okay, how, how do I attract grace? Maybe you have grace before, you want to attract it more because we can, we can multiply in grace. I'm still praying for God to God, please give me more grace. The first thing is be intentional about your life. When you are intentional about your life, you live to please God. And when you please God, he, he showers his grace on you. Be intentional about your life. Don't live to impress people because if you live to impress people, if God gives you instruction, you won't be able to do it if it is not convenient for those people you want to impress. Make God your number one. Be intentional to be a child of God and be a child of God, of God and God alone. Of God and God alone. And the second one I have here is be humble. The first speaker has said a lot about this. You know, we ladies we used to say she's not my mate. Some people, if they even know your age, since that day, they drop their respect for you. Achievement is not by age. You, if your son asks what you, you, you desire, you want in Christ, please tap it, tap into the grace. Learn from that your son. You are respecting God in life. You are tapping into the grace. James 4 says, but he giveth more grace. We have what he said, God resist the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. I pray God will not resist us. Give more grace to the humble. Are we humble indeed? Are we humble indeed? It's a question to ponder on. There's no level of achievement that God will now be so tiny in our eyes. If it is excellence, you are brilliant. You've forgotten some people have studied and because of that education or what they have studied, they ran mad. It's not because they want, they wish to. It's because the grace you carry to do it and be successful in it, they are not opportune to get that grace. Be humble. No matter what you've achieved, Bring yourself low. You shouldn't be at, at, at any level that people will not be able to come to you. Don't turn yourself to a small idol. Allow God to use you to reach out to people. When you are so highly minded of yourself, some people will be pissed out. They won't be able to even come to you to share their mind with you, to share their heart with you. To the glory of God, I've received so many secret opinions of people. And it's because, you know, before a student can come to you and share their mind with you, it's because of how close and how low you are brought yourself. Not that you, you place your hide on it and doctor this and you are that. They won't come to you. And if they cannot come to you, how do you want to reach out to them? How do you want to deliver the message God has sent you? Be humble. The third one is listening and yield to instructions. You know, instructions cause, it, it causes your elevation. For you to move from one level to another, you just need an instruction from God. Go and look at those men of God that their ministry is moving high. There are people that they obey the instruction of God, no matter who is displeased, let only God be pleased. And you might be asking in your heart, Okay, maybe I have, a, uh, my husband is someone that um, will not yield. 
if I do this, you first have the heart of obedience and see how God we invest in you wisdom to convince him to do what God has instructed. So fight is from God. God cannot send you an errand, cannot instruct you to do something without a purpose. It can be a purpose to reach out to others, to lift others, to set others free, or to get a lifting yourself. To shift up. Anytime you respond to God's leading, he gives you a deep revelation. My life is just an expression of the yielding to instructions of God. God says, okay, empty your account. Yes, Lord. And it's not about Kradabra. It's not a, a, God has given me scholarship before and he said, invest it. Yes, Lord. That doesn't make me poor. Because if he has asked you to do it, he's ready to fill that gap up in many folds. He will not owe you. Obey God. Obey God. If God has asked you to write a book. You know, I was talking about slothfulness, laziness, and you are still dragging. You will just see another topic from another corner. That means you are replaced already. And if you obey God swiftly, you will just see that he talks to you to meet the need of people. And that is the peak. He talks to you to meet what people need. Graceful pillars. That is the peak. If God is saying this person needs pampas, take it there. And you go there and they put their hands on their head. That pampas is what they need at the moment. You are at your peak of multiplied grace, of grace that cannot be subdued. You want to be exceptional in anything you do, be intentional by obeying instructions. When I was on my PhD, my research objectives was given to me as instructions in the dream of the night. Some people might be saying, how, oh, how? Oh. I've shared this with people. I completed it in less than two years with submission for examination with everything. But the secret was obedience to instructions of God. Many times God is talking to us. We are not even yielding because of what we have in our heart. Don't go this place. That is where you think it's a greener pasture. That is where you want to go. The first speaker said it all. You don't need to be uh, abroad or to be anywhere before you can make it. Anywhere you are, just make sure you are in the position, you are in the location where God wants you to be. Because in his divine location, there is provision. In his divine location, there is excellence, there is distinction. People will just know you, you are, you are, you are an institution. I have a question here. I will answer your question. Let me quickly wrap this up. The next one is to glorify God. Glorify God. And you know, God is not, uh, God is more interested in our heart. Before you say it out in you, he, he already knows what you are saying, what you are thinking about to say. He owns us. Glorify God with those achievements. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. If you want more, if you want more, if you want to achieve with ease, you got what I'm saying? You want to really achieve with ease. I know majority of us as students, we are still pursuing postgraduate studies and all that. If you want to achieve with ease, glorify God. Let God know that this certificate I'm craving for is to serve him and serve him genuinely. And how can you glorify God? By your level of faith. You know, a graceful pillar is, is not a, is someone that we just wave out, wave in because of the challenges of life. You backslide today and the challenges is gone. You come back. Mm -mm. By our level of faith, God knows that this lady trusts in me. Trust me so much. He will not let you down. He will multiply that grace. And the second one is by our worship. And when we talk about worship, you can worship God with everything, anything. By singing, worship God with your life. Your decency is, a, is an act of worship. How decent you are is an act of worship. Your giving life is an act of worship. 
What has he not given unto us? He gave us all. Then why can't you give him? Anytime God instructs you to go and sow that seed, you better do it quickly if you want to be a graceful pillar. When you are under grace, you are shine people that are struggling. You are shine people that are struggling. I'm saying this from the depth of my heart, and it's not, it's what I've, it's what has happened to me. You know, there was a time during my PhD, I got a funding, a lot of money, and I was about rejoicing. Oh God, you know, I'm on a study leave without pay. I this is just an opening, and he said, it is a seed. It is a seed. I look at myself as if he's not the one I heard. I knew his voice. And I yielded. I can't, I yield. by now I'm thanking God I yielded because I, I don't know how much is the money that will make me to block the blessings of God upon my life. So if you want to really go far, you want to be identified as a woman of grace in terms of your giving life, please let it pack up to God, to people, to God, to people. You know, this December, the only thing just does something in my heart, go and do this to the homeless people and that, to God and to people. To God and to people. When you are eating, always remember there are some people, as a woman of good works, a graceful pillar, there are some people on the streets, there are some people can, that cannot pay school fees. Do the one your capacity can do. That will not say you will not build mansions. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So in all we do, glorify God with your life, with your giving life, with your heart of service and worship in everything to do, you do. Glorify God. So God, and remember God will not need anything from you. But you need God for everything. Either you give or not, the gates of hell cannot prevail over his church. The church of God will always march on. People's life will always progress. Either you help them or not. God will raise help up. You are just privileged to be the one that will help. If you delay it or you think you are not doing it, if that person is truly a child of God, God will have mercy and raise another person. So don't think God has instructed you to do this thing. If I don't do it, they won't build that church. They will build the church and build many more parishes. Be a graceful pillar. See any opportunity to give as an investment and as a way to cause a shift up. I pray the Lord will help us and give us the grace to do all these things in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give all the praise for this word because you are the owner of grace. You are the giver of grace. We pray that God, you shower us with your grace, Lord. Amen. We want to grow in grace. Lord. We want to multiply in grace. Lord. We want to be an evidence of your grace. Lord. Lord, please shower us with your divine grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. As pillars in our houses, in our churches, in our places of works, our Father and our God, please help us, oh God, to showcase your grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless us, bless everything we do, bless everything we represent. Give us a heart that obeys your instruction. Give Amen. us the heart that follows you wholeheartedly. Give Amen. us the heart that worships you genuinely in the name Amen. of Jesus. We use this opportunity to pray for this um, ministry shall continue to grow and grow. More grace is released unto them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray that God, you connect all of us with our destiny efforts in the name of Jesus. Blessed Amen. be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Uh, actually, I, I authored this book Amen. and I'm um, led to donate 10 copies to our sisters in Nigeria. The book says you are so pretty. I authored the book. So I will arrange with Sister Bidemi. The book is in Ekiti. How she will get the book for the pillars that are in Nigeria wow. as a gift. And wow. I, I pray the Lord Almighty will bless you as you read in Jesus' name. There are some yeah. questions here. Thank you. So, 
Thank you so much, Ma. I have, I have the book and I've, I bought the book, I think, early this year, and it's powerful. In fact, six, most of my sisters, I think three of them here in South Africa, in KwaZulu Nata, also have the books, and it has been a great blessing to us. So I'm sure that you'll be blessed. Thank you so much, Mommy, for donating the book to the people. You are so grateful, Ma. Thank you. Thank so you, Ma. Thank you, for the Thank you very much, Ma. We thank God and we give glory to God. We appreciate God for that. I, I think there is a question. Yes. Okay, can you, can okay. you answer? Okay, Ma, I think it's just one question. Maybe you should quickly help us out so that we can round up. Ma. Okay, ma. What's the question? I can't even find it. Please, can someone invest in a business without saving as a small business owner? It, uh, thank you for the question. It depends on. It depends on what kind of business. So what that person is saying is, with the little I have, can I use it to go and start a small business without saving? Yeah, it depends on what kind of business, and it's it's, it's very good. Uh, if, yes, and, imagine if you have a small amount of money. Think of oh, what yeah, you can do. Yes. It's in two folds. Think of what you can do with this money, and let's see. You know, you need to. How do I put it now? Meet the need of people. Don't um, don't offer what is not needed. So with the little you have, with that business, is it what is needed in that my small locality? Imagine, is it what is needed in that small locality? You know, in your locality, you people can need peanuts. We call it granite. Peanuts might be needed. And you know, to make peanuts, you, you all just get small amount of money, start small from, it might be what is needed. Ensure that you have that small business is what is needed, then start it. Or if you know that, okay, if my salary is 1,000 Naira and the business I have in my mind to start, at heart to start, to start it, I'll need up to 10,000 Naira. Like? Why okay. don't you use this? Like six months, just save to be able to gather some amount of money and start off. So it depends on what kind of business. If you know you have the enough capital to start small, not big, start it. And if you know you still need to accumulate, ensure that you save this money. Ensure that you save this money, then start up. And if you are saving it, you know, I put it in the slide, protect it, save it wisely. Save it wisely. I pray the Lord will help us. I hope I could, I, I'm able to answer your question. Then I have a question here. I'm a, I'm a cheerful type. I love to joke that that doesn't stop me from being serious. When necessary, can that devalue me? Now, from being a woman of value or a lady of value, doesn't mean we should not frown our face or be too serious. You got what I'm saying? When we talk about kindness, when we talk about being merciful, you need to cheer up and not also look like a sadist. So I'm not condemning, we are not condemning being cheerful, being jovial. You know, when I rap with people, at times they look at me, ah, is it you? Is it not? Is it, are you the one? Are you this? Are you, this? Are you that? No. It's because you can't also be frowning around, frowning around and you want to pass a message across. You can't be a sadist. That's, let me just put it like that. But what I was saying, set a line, especially with the opposite sex. If you are not married, you shouldn't be someone that a guy can just punch your breast and go, 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 go like that. Anybody can just, hi, hi, how are you? Push you, push you down, push you up. And you, you, you see what I'm saying? That, that's, that's, there should be a line of demarcation. There should be some sort of value you place on yourself. And 
you know, joke also, we need to be careful because out of self-control is part of what we say. Too much joke. I've forgotten that Bible verse. Sin, too much words at times. Sin might not be found wanting. So, sin might not be found wanting. So please ensure that there's a life of demarcation, there's a line of demarcation and in our jokes, ensure that we don't lie, you don't exaggerate, you know, all these things. Because God is going to judge every word of our mouth. That's why we need to be very careful. And I pray that Lord will help us in Jesus' name. He said, Ma, how do one balance looking good plus having a robust saving life? Very good question. You can look good and have a robust saving life. You know, from any amount, in, in this life, we have um, a rule, budgeting rule. So as children of God, you know that anything that comes to you, that 10%, which is the minimum, is what belongs to you, is what belongs to God. The 10% is what belongs to God as tight minimum, which can be above. So the remaining 90% is what I call the 100% for me. So if I'm expecting my salary, the 90% is my real worth. If I'm expecting any amount of money, the 90% is what I have. So the rule is you make sure that you save. Save out of this. And um, when you save, the rule is 50, 30, 20. The, like, that 50% is just a rule. You might assert it. It can work for A and might not work for B. It's just to guide people in financial literacy. So now we know that the 90% is our 100%. We've given God what belongs to him. So the 50% is for paying of bills, running the home, running everything, looking good and all that. 50%, can you see it's, so, it's, it's much. So it, it now depends on your income. After paying your tax, the 50% can be used for anything and that will be of benefit to your home and to your life. And the 30% is for unforeseen circumstances. You just keep it here because of emergency. Now, what kind of emergency? Maybe someone just call you. Can you please help me with this? It's part of it. You must help people. You must love people. Be interested in investing in people's life. It's part of it. Or there's a need in the church apart from what you are budgeted for. It's part of it. There is an unwanted occurrence or that. Just is that thirty percent in part of it, and the remaining twenty percent is your savings. You can see out of 100 now, 20 is for your savings, which is the minimum, really. Because if you want to go into aggressive savings, you can double it up. It depends on your situation. So with that life, with that rule alone, there is room for saving. There is room for looking good. There is, look, there is room for eating well. There is room for being a blessing unto others. There is room for all those things. So. I pray the Lord Almighty we help us all to handle our finances very well. I hope, have I attended to all the questions? Ma, there was a question that talks about shares. That if someone wants to invest. Well, buying shares is good. It's a means of investment, but you need to be smart in it. Work with the store brokers those that are specialized in that to guide you when to buy shares and when not to buy. You know, all these top brokers will give you the time and the season, but there is no investment you make so far is well secured and protected that is lost. I'm not saying this, um, bringing 20,000 and taking 40,000 like MMM. I'm not condemning MMM. I'm only saying because of the experience some people add. So that's why you have to protect what you have. Invest wisely. So there's no investment that is lost. If you want to buy shares, it's a good one. Please work with the stockbrokers. I'm not a stockbroker. I'm not really good 
at looking at it, what is a dollar to this and how much will it, not this Bitcoin and all that, cryptocurrency. There are many of them, it's not only chairs. They are very good platform, but please work with those that are specialized in this and let them guide you. That is why they, that's why they've gone to school. There are people that are specialized in that. That's why they know it very well. Let them guide you and ensure that you are guided before you go for it. I, Thank I, you I, so I, much. Okay. You're so grateful. Thank you for the powerful message. Thank you for the advice. We are really grateful. I'm sure everyone on this platform is blessed already. Thank you so much. Okay, someone is asking, how can we follow you on social media? All right, uh, sister, um, sister, DJ me is following me already. We are yes. friends on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, even though I'm not really active on Instagram. And um, well, majorly on Facebook. And my email address, maybe I should just tap it type it for you to have it. You can contact me anytime. I do a monthly program for Saturday of the month. Yes, we are happy. We'll be happy to see you around. I think Sister Okwey and me, Sister Bidemi has been following us. And go and be we are not wasting time. God is the, what, the most important thing we have as an asset in that program is the presence of God Almighty. We can be two, we can be three, but God is always with us. And that is all that matters. So please um, see Sister Me, Bide Me, and um, I'll drop my email. I'm, I'm dropping my email now. You can email me. If you want to have my contact number, I will give it to you through my email uh, because of um, securities and other, because the event is on more other social media apart from Zoom. I might not give my yeah. contact number, but if you want to have my number, just email me. We can chat anytime. You got what I'm saying? I'm a friend of many, and I'm trying to be to be to have more friends. I'm praying to God to send more people to my life. You know, we can benefit from each other. And that is just it. Thank you so much. Mommy is I, I will I will send the email on the, the pillar WhatsApp group because we're actually like streaming this program on Facebook. So I'm going to send the email on the pillar WhatsApp group and I'm going to send you mommy's contacts with her permission. Yes, <laughs> you can. Oh, thank you so much. I think one of my sisters, she's my sister, she's my friend, you know, God connected us together. She's sharing my Facebook um, page. Please, I want to be receiving requests. Just let's connect together. We have a lot to share together, and I can also learn from you. That's the most important thing. I'm still growing, and you can share views with me that can increase my life. I'm very willing to listen to you too. Thank you so much. Yeah. She's a she's very passionate, especially when it comes to young lives. I I I've been following her since last day. Actually, I love great people. I don't know. I just have this this <laughs> flair for great people. And when I see that you're doing well, you are great, I want to learn from you. I don't envy people. I want to learn from you. So when I, I had a story last year, when I was in my first year, I just came here recently from my one of my lovely sister. And when she told me, she, one thing that struck me was that she told me, I have someone that finished PhD, PhD within two years. I was like, wow, I need to be a friend. <laughs> then I started following her up and she, she wrote a book. I bought the book. I said, I must buy this book, not for anything. I want to tap into the grace because I must also write a book. So I bought the book. I read the book. I read the book prayerfully. I was scrolling through the book prayerfully that, oh, my father, I... I tapped into this grace. Like she was saying, you, if you want to, if you want to be graceful, you need to, you need to envy people that are graceful. I'm not saying jealous. Like you need to be yeah. happy when people are graceful, and you need to serve them. And I've been, I've been, I've been part of a monthly program too, and I've always been blessed. So I will advise us or suggest to us that we should also join the monthly program. I will put it on the pillars platform. 
anytime she's having this program and I suggest that we will join. Thank you so much, mommy. We are very grateful. Thank you for coming. We, we are really honored to have you here, ma. Thank you so much, ma. We are grateful. The pillars are, uh, they are, they are greeting you. They are saying thank you. They appreciate your time. Mom, and they would like to have your book. Yeah, I'm going to share the book, but there are some smart people. Even before I put it on the Zoom, they already sent me messages on my WhatsApp page. They are very smart. I hope the book reached the other people, but I'm sure it will be first 10 people that, that chatted me up. And please, just chat me up on WhatsApp. I will tell you if the book is still remaining, because most of us here are using techno, I tell, I don't really know our identity. So just chat me up on WhatsApp and we are going to get to the book. And we trust God to also provide for us to donate the book because personally I have been blessed with the book. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank God, Ma. Thanks for having me. It's a real privilege that um, I'm not taking for granted. For you, you have a lot of people to call, to come and speak. So thank you for identifying the grace of God in my life and for allowing me to come and showcase the grace of God over me. This program has also blessed me and um, I'm not taking it for granted. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the opera, I just want to add to what Mama said. And I want to just um, reiterate what the first speaker also said, just to keep us abreast and to refresh our memory. Said what you do consistently matters. So even after this program, be consistent in whatsoever thing you are doing. If you're an academia, be consistent in reading, be consistent in whatsoever thing you are doing. But we say whatsoever thing your hand find it doing, do it with your might. Do it with your might. Be consistent. That you are complete in Christ. So don't think, don't let anybody think they are the one completing you. You know, there is this adage that people felt if you let me tell you something, if you are not complete as a single lady, you will never be complete as a married lady. Don't think, oh, because I am single, I am not complete. I need a man to complete me. Fine, when you get married, two become one. But don't depend on a man to complete you. Even as a single lady, you need to be complete in Christ. The only person that can complete you is Jesus Christ. If you are empty as a single lady, I bet you will be empty as a married lady. So even as a single lady, be loaded. Mm. Study the word of God, know your identity, know who God has called you, be complete in God. It is Jesus that will tell you who you are, not a man. Don't allow a man to define you. Don't allow anybody to define who you are. Don't let people tell you who you are, but you should tell them who you are in Christ. Because it is only Jesus that can tell you who you are. And whatsoever thing Jesus has not called you, you are not. So be complete in Jesus, be complete in Christ. Being a complete woman is a journey. So don't be too hard on yourself. Like mommy does shared her own story now. She did not become a doctor. She did not get married in one day. Where she is now, it was not just one day journey. It was a consistent diligence that made her to be where she was telling you how she grew up in the village. Like some of us, if we tell you our story like this, <laughs> you'll be marveled. You know, most of my friends, they're always telling me that you need to write a book. If, you, if we tell you our story, is it when we are undergraduates? When we used to, during my high school, I used to use uh, water and atagugum to eat ever. Is that the story that I want to tell you? You know, when you put water, uh, atagugu in water and you're using it to eat ever, you understand? But look at where I am today. So I am not, I didn't get here in one day. It is through consistency and diligence and knowing who I am in Christ. Just know that the, the plan God has for you is of good to give you hope and expected end. If you have this expectation ahead of you, you will be able to look up to Jesus and you are pressing for that because you know where you are today is not your destination. Praise God. Another thing the first speaker said is, your life is too small to be, to, to be the purpose you are living. That one caught me. Like if you, if you are a lady here, you are a pillar, you must be purposeful. Your life is too small to be the reason why you are living. Like if the reason why you're living is to wear nice clothes, is to eat nice food, to go to KFC, to show people that you have nice, nice things, then <laughs> you are not living. So your life is too small to be what you are living for. Impact lives. 
You know, this pillars meeting, we have somebody that donated 7,500 for us to buy a, a, a data for people. That is impact. Impact like, we, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not using it as a boast, but we spent money to organize this program, not because we want to raise offering or tithe or anything, but because we want to impact life. Can you imagine, can you place money in what, like what you have listened to now? I don't think any amount of money can buy it. I don't think so. But we believe that those people that have been impacted, tomorrow they will also impact other people. And that is what we personally we are living for. So if you are living and there's nobody that you've impacted, can you imagine how many people mommy is impacted in, in, in South Africa as a lecturer? She's impacted a lot of people that she did not even know. Like I am one of those people that she has impacted. There was a money, we just finished devotion and she called in and she was saying something prophetically. Like she was, what she was saying, I was telling my husband that, ah, did this woman see any vision? Because she was speaking, at, she was speaking right words at the right time. So please impact life. I've been following my daughter for, I don't know when. <laughs> I just love her. Anytime I see a movie like this, I just love her. And she has been impacting life. Please impact life. A graceful pillar is both earthly and heavenly minded. Hey, don't be, uh, my pastor, Pastor Lauren, that we say, don't be a, a, a is it a 12 o'clock Christian? <laughs> he said, be, be relevant on heart and be relevant even in heaven too. Don't just say heaven, heaven, heaven. We all go to heaven. We want to go to heaven. But don't be heavenly relevant and earthly irrelevant. And don't be earthly irre uh, irrelevant and heavenly relevant. Let us live a balanced life. Don't be slothful. One of my best scriptural verses, don't be slothful in business. Target in spirit serving the Lord. You are doing the things of God. You are also doing your academic. Don't say, you know, that there are some people where we are still back in undergraduate. They will sleep in church for 24 hours and they will not read their book. I'm not saying, see, I served God. When I was undergraduate, I was in almost all the units. I was a sister court. There was a time I was a sister court in my fellowship, in my uh, faculty fellowship. I doubled as a sister court again. I a Bible study coordinator. Like I served in several, I was the prayer court at some stage. I served in several positions, but yet, after serving and spending like seven hours in, in, in the school, I mean in church, I might spend like, 10 hours in the library. Instead of me sleeping, I will use that opportunity to read. So I don't really have time. You know, somebody, will, I think the second minister was talking about, you know, having friends. If you are too occupied with the things of God and the things and your academic, you might not have plenty of friends because those times you will stay, stay making jest or doing something that does not work. It. Your idea was, you are there studying your, your Bible or you are there reading your books. So you don't have a lot of time to, to do unnecessary things. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. She said, um, so I want to I want to announce to us that she she I will just make a few announcements and we will pray. The first announcement is there is this uh, book launching I put on the pillars page. And I would love us to to order for it. I'm sure you will you will really be blessed. It's uh, written by one of my sister, and she's also graced like. I've been following out to, you know, she, she's always organizing a program on Wednesday morning um, and the warrior spirit. And I've always been part of this, that program. Every morning, every Wednesday morning, I've always been part of it and I've always been blessed. She wrote the book authored called, um, I am not ashamed to be a woman. So if you are not ashamed to be a woman, get that book. Just sew into the book. You know me, I like sewing. You know when we were talking about that, I remember when I was doing my master's, I was collecting stipend of 15,000 Naira. But do you know what I do? I paid my tithes 10%. Listen, 15,000 Naira, I paid tithes 10%. I pay offering 10%. 10%, I paid prophet offering every month. I give my pastor 10% of that money every month, just as a prophet offering. I give my parents 10%. And just look at how much is left for me to spend. 15,000 Naira. After spending 10% tithes, 10% offering, 10% private offering, 10% um, parent offering, 10% for orphanage. So I, I donate 10% of my salary every month to the orphanage. So how much do you think is left? So you know, when all these things are happening to me, my friend will tell me that we are not surprised because they, they were aware of all those things then. 
you if i see you doing something when i was undergraduate i saw a brother if this brother is praying you will see fire in his eyes i sold into his life why i want to tap into the prayer ministry i see you you are what you you have the word of god i will tap into it i remember that i don't even know i would get married to my husband then he was our bible study coordinator i know he have the word of god you know what i did? i sold into his life just to tap into that grace i found in him so you can't just sit down doing nothing and think grace will drop on you. No, grace don't. Grace, the grace of the Lord has appeared to all men. But still, you need to do some things just to, uh, to, to, to associate yourself with some grace. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And our mommy has also told us about our book. You are, you are so pretty. You are so pretty. You have a lot of things in you. If you read that book, you will know you are so pretty. And you will never undervalue yourself. So I want you to get the book. She has donated 10, uh, 10 copies to us. But paraventure, the book did not reach you. It's just, ma, but it's not, it's not just 100 rands I got it there. You are missing, yeah, ma. 100 rands. 100 rands is around 2,500 in Nigeria. No, no, no the book 1, is 1,000 naira in Nigeria. You see, 1,000 naira. You know, some people buy credit card with 1,000 naira. Some people buy a uh, chingong <laughs> with 1,000 naira. So please, instead of you to buy credit card with 1,000 naira, sow into your life. Buy the book, read, read books. <laughs> read books to be a graceful pillar. Read books, buy books. <laughs> During my undergraduate times, masters, I, I used my money to buy books. I remember there was a time there was no Brobila Connie's book I don't have. I have all Brobila Connie's book. Anytime I see any book comes out, I'll buy it. Not as, not as if I'm very rich, but I bought books because I know I'm going places and I can't just uh, just sit, sit one place and think I will get there without also doing something. Buy books. One of my friends is also, is also just published a book, Ten Commandments to Academic Excellence. His name is Adekola uh, Oluwadunsin. Buy his book. You want to go into the academia. <laughs> This particular friend of mine is graced too. He had two masters, he graduated as a first class student. He had two masters and he had distinctions in the two masters. Presently he's studying in Cape Town, UCT with scholarship, full scholarship. He, the two masters was run on scholarship. The PhD was run on scholarship. So if you are trusting God to get a scholarship, buy the book. I think it's just maybe 1,000 Naira. No, it's, it's even 700 Naira. Buy, just buy it. It's 700 Naira. You can starve yourself to buy the book. <laughs> Don't worry, you will eat. Those times when I was investing in books, investing in going to Boko for retreats. But look at it now. I'm actually reaping all those investments. I remember that my undergraduate, I always go to Boko for me. Do you know how Benue State is far from Lori? I'll be there to get blessed. All those things really help. So I hold you to buy those books, get the books, give your friend, sow into your ministry, sow into what God is calling you into. Sleep less, eat less. <laughs> I'm not saying you should not sleep and eat, but all those things, not too much, so that you can achieve the purpose of God for your life. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So somebody is giving two Oh my God, the pillars, they are graced. <laughs> so somebody said will be don she will be donating two of the book to sisters in South Africa. Shout out to sisters in South Africa. So you have two of the book to sisters in South Africa. I'm trusting God that some other people might donate too, but even if they do not donate, also buy with your money and eh? invest. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. I will invite um, Sister Emit to just take us in opera for a few minutes before we round up. Hello, our uh, phone is off. Okay. Can we just uh, begin to give God all the glory? Just pray. We have had a lot of things today. The Lord has spoke to us. You can just unmute yourself and talk to God. Just unmute yourself and pray. I want us to pray because we'll be praying in the spirit. We need to internalize what God has done. What God has uh, done to us today, we need to internalize the word of God that has been spoken to us. Can we just um, begin to appreciate God first, give God all the glory, give him all the honor, give him all the adoration. Jehovah, we worship you. Allah, we worship you.
Alohet be thy name. Thank you for this program. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We worship for making it a good service. We lift your name higher. Daily as I live, often as I go. Let my whole life be a expression of your grace. Hey, Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we begin to talk to God, Lord? Daily as I live, often as I grow, let my life be expression of your grace. I refuse to be grace. I refuse to be put to shame. You know the difference. The opposite of grace is shame. Can you tell it to God, Lord? I refuse to be graceless, Lord. Daily as I live, as I grow, Lord, help me to grow in grace. That I will grow in grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Mashatali brado shikrete le brando zukroto. Rekete zukroto li branda do zula da da do shana na na. Rene do zekete li brando zubra anda le de do shekete. Rano zubra anda da li brado zekete le brado shibra. Mele do shibra da li brado do shekete. Manzukata li brado do shekata li brado Brother, oh, shake it. Rana Zutali, Branda, oh, Zubra, and Dali, Brother, oh, Shenene, Rekete, Zubra, and Dani, Man, oh, Shakata, Man, Zubra, and Dali, Brother, oh, Shake it, Ali, Brother, oh, Shakata, Man, Zeket, Ali, Branda, oh, Shibranda, Dala, Brother, oh, Shenene, Rekete, Zufra, and Dali, Brother, oh, Shake it, Man, Zatali, Brother, oh, Shantata, Rene, oh, Zeket, Lord, Brutus, and Lord, that Lord, please me, high growing grace. That I will keep growing in grace in the mighty name of Jesus. That I will keep growing in grace in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. To every spirit of distraction, every spirit of inconsistency, every spirit of procrastination that has made me to 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 to, to devalue in grace, that has made me not to not to not to mount mount up to 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 your calling. In my life, can you tell God, Lord, I, I I do away with it now. I stand against it. I stand against every spirit of every spirit of procrastination, every spirit of procrastination, every spirit of uh, every spirit of procrastination, every spirit of uh, idleness. Can you begin to pray against all those things that has a lot of people procrastination has really put them at, at a grand level? Can you begin to pray against all those things in the mighty name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. Finally, I want us to begin to Amen. prophesy. I want you to begin to prophesy to yourself. Tell it to God, I am graced. I am complete. The hands of the Lord is upon me. The glory of the Lord is upon me. I refuse to I refuse to stand. The hand of the Lord is upon me. I refuse to, to be devalued. I refuse to, 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 to sell myself cheaply. Can you begin to talk to God? I am a pillar to my husband. I refuse to be graceless in the name God. of Jesus. I decide the hand of the Lord is upon me. The glory of the Lord is upon me. I am complete in Christ. The person said, complete, complete, complete in me. I am complete. Complete, 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 complete in me. I am complete in I am complete in the name of Jesus. I am a pillar. I am not ashamed to be a woman. The glory of the Lord is upon me as from today. Today, I'll begin to rise to do great things. And from today, I'll begin to rise to do exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. Masha Katali, Brother Do Shekete, Reno Zitali, Brother Shilede Do Zekran Tali, Brando Shinada, Mount Zupra and Dani Mano Shekete. I do away with my past. My past will not haunt me again. 
Mount Zuta, you know, the first minister was talking about some people staying in their past and their past is haunting them from doing exploits. Can you begin to speak against that? For every past that has been stopping me from, to do exploits, I do away with it. I move into the future. I begin to fly. I begin to swear. I begin to fly. I do away with every past. in Jesus' name, I have prayed. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Odayo, please, can you pray for us? Okay, ma. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the this Lord, indeed, you have sent us your word. Thank you for the ministers you have been for us. Thank you for taking over the network. Lord, we will not take this one for granted. Mm -hmm. Thank you for orderliness. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you have done for us this evening. Lord, we say that we're exalted in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we are begging you that this help you have sent to us, Lord, help us not to take it for granted. Lord, mm -hmm. we will not make light of it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, whatever you want us to do, Oh God, whatever you want us to do through this meeting, whatever instruction you have placed on our heart, help us to act fast in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will not regret that you have sent us this, this particular time in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. For every minister you have used for us, we ask, oh God, that you will multiply grace upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, for the convener of this uh, platform, we ask, oh God, that you will strengthen her, you will increase your grace upon her life also in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh God, by the time we will see ourselves, by the time we uh, will discuss next year on pillars, oh God, by the time we have another meeting, it will be that this meeting did great things in our lives and that we will come, mm -hmm. every one of us, with testimonies. Thank you because you have heard us. For in Jesus' name we are free. Thank you so much. We are really grateful. Thank you for gracing this meeting. And I'm sure you have been mightily blessed. Thank you so much. So we can just unmute our video just to say I as we, as we just leave the page. And just unmute our video and Amen. <laughs> 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 This afternoon, really well, Grace. Thank you. For, uh, uh, thank you, Ma. I'm sure you are thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, the, the program will be, will be we recorded the program and it will be live on, presently it's live on uh, Facebook and we will upload it on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to send us the, the link. To, um, I'm going to send it to the last page. So please kindly share the link with your friends and colleagues. You can watch the uh, program live on YouTube. You can share to your friends and colleagues that were able to join the meeting.
so that they will watch the program live on YouTube. Thank you so much. Good night. Mm -hmm. Have a lovely night rest. Bye, bye, bye. Okay. Dr. Ashaka, thank you for joining. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm sure really you appreciate it. Thank mm -hmm. you.